fucking Enter the Dragon, that was like the big American movie. And he, like, I think he died for it even got released. That was going to be like the big, big break into Hollywood type shit. What, what did he die from? And you know, you know, there's little conspiracy theories about different shit. I think he just like, hold on, I'll actually, I'll look it up for you. Because I, cause I think I was actually just talking to the spirit about this shit too. Uh. There's some people, I, I, I know the conspiracy theory. I, I'll tell you that first before I tell you the real shit. Yes, let's go. Conspiracy um, theory. The, theory, the, the shit I've heard is that because you know Bruce Lee came to America and he started teaching all these celebrities and the, a bunch of people how to do all this like karate or kung fu shit mm -hmm. and there was a rumor that people back in the homeland didn't like that shit and oh. uh, and he, Bruce Lee was also like a super like flashy braggadocious motherfucker too they didn't like that either Thought some, some people were talking about, oh, he's disrespectful and all that type of shit hold on Bruce Lee Oh, Bruce Lee was super cocky, mm. motherfucker, bro. Super. He knew like that nigga. Jet Lee. Yeah, if Jet Lee is Romeo Must Die, I'm talking about Bruce Lee. It. Fuck. Yeah, see? Nah, Bruce Lee way back in the day. But now, nah, um, there was a rumor that um they sent somebody to fuck him up that could do like this little, like, I don't know how you describe like this little, basically this little death punch type shit. And they supposedly hit him with that shit and it fucking killed him. That's the urban myth I've heard. <laughs> I like that. Okay. But I'll, okay. Let me see. I'll see what the actual, like, medical thing was. Yeah, there you go. It says, uh, in 1973, he collapsed during a dialogue, basically ADR session for Enter the Dragon at Golden Harvest in Hong Kong. He suffered from seizures and headaches and was immediately rushed to the hospital. Doctors diagnosed cerebral edema, edema, which is excess accumulation of fluid in the brain. They were able to reduce the swelling through the administration of mannitol. The headache and cerebral edema that occurred in the first class were later repeated on the day of his death. So he had some brain shit. Damn. And he was he was young, too. How old was he? I'm Under 30? I was about to look at that right now, too. Let me see. I got to go back up to the top. He was a legend. I'm going he, he had to be. 32. Like... He was a UP jaded. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's, wow. It's crazy because it says he was born in San Francisco, California, too. I didn't know that, actually. Wait, so the one here? fuck was he mad? I guess I guess he went because he all his original movies were in Hong Kong, so he probably went born here and went back. Smart man. Well, yeah, you know, the crazy thing is his son died too, and I asked mm -hmm. super young. From what? It was filming a filming a movie. He's filming a movie called The Crow. You ever heard of The Crow? No. All right, well, I got you right here. It says on March thirty first, nineteen ninety three. Uh, his name was Brandon Lee. Brandon Lee was filming a scene in The Crow where his character is shot and killed by thugs. In the scene, the character walks into his apartment and discovers his fiance being beaten and raped. The actor, actor, whoever the fuck, his that guy, the guy in the movie, he fired a diagonal <laughs> revolver bullet at him. And in a previous scene, had called for dummy cartridges to be loaded in a revolver. Instead of uh, purchasing commercial dummy cartridges, the film's prop crew created their own by pulling the bullets from the live rounds. Dumping the powder charge and then reinserting the bullets. However, they unknowingly or unintentionally left the live primer in place at the rear of the cartridge. At some point during filming, the revolver was apparently discharged with one of these improperly deactivated cartridges in the chamber, setting off the primer with enough force to drive the bullet partway into the barrel where it became stuck, a condition known as a squib load. The prop crew either failed to notice this or failed to recognize the significance of this issue. In the fatal scene, which called for the revolver, a revolver to be fired at least from a distance of 3.6 to 4.5 meters, which is 12 to 15 feet, the dummy cartridges were exchanged with blank rounds, which feature a live powder charge and primer, but no bullet, thus allowing the gun to be fired without the risk of actual projectile. However, since the bullet from the dummy round was already trapped in the barrel, this caused the 44 Magnum bullet to be fired out of the barrel with virtually the same force as if the gun had been loaded with an actual live round, and it struck Lee in the abdomen, mortally wounding him. He was rushed to the hospital, underwent six hours of surgery. Attempts to save him were unsuccessful, and he was pronounced dead on March 31st, 1993. At 1.03 p.m., he was 28 years old. So he's younger than me, shit. That sounds like the conspiracy. The crazy thing about it is that Bruce Lee has a movie called, um, well, that's the, the American title of it, is The Chinese Connection. It's called Fist of Fury, really, though. But the end of that movie shows him, like, Oh, I don't want to spoil the movie for you too much. Basically, it, it ends with the motherfucker running toward a group of people and getting lit the fuck up. And some people were saying, like like you said, conspiracy shit, where it's like, wait, well, they, he died in almost a similar way that like, his dad died in the movies. Maybe those people from back then that fucked his dad up had beef with him too. I don't know. You know, these people talk, say mm -hmm. shit. I would be one of those guys. That makes so much sense to me. Honestly, I don't really see conspiracy as much with that one because that just sounds like some bullshit. Like, oh, we trying to, you know, save money on the budget. Don't buy the fucking, like, proper blanks. Let's just take the bullets out. And then, like, that just sounds like somebody should have got 
fired and locked up for that shit. Mm-hmm. They got somebody super murdered. Yeah, someone should have, that that whole the whole team that was in charge of like the handling the guns and shit should have been in jail. Yeah, whoever's in charge of that prop department, yeah, you fire, money. <laughs> Not only fired jail, like yeah. you literally like your negligence killed someone. That's called manslaughter. We got to do the crow one day, PJs. I've actually never seen that movie before either. And people love that movie. Oh. Okay. I mean, I'm sure I can go. We can find more detail about that shit then, but we're not talking about that or Bruce Lee movie. That just happened to come up. Oh, and I did hear record somewhere in there, PJ. So I, this is all live now. Oh, well, hello, motherfuckers. Yeah, we were talking about. I just saw the Criterion's releasing a Bruce Lee box set, and that came into the conversation. Because guess what? I'm buying that because guess who's never seen a Bruce Lee movie? This guy right here. Yeah, PJ's never seen all five of them. Crazy. Yeah. Come at me, bro. Say something. I told him that he fought Chuck Norris and he was shocked. Like, motherfuckers are like, what? <laughs> I, I need to see that. I, Chuck Norris is like a 90s legend. It's crazy because a lot of his shit was in the 80s. <laughs> but didn't he train Chuck Norris? I, I don't think he, like, trained him from jump. He might have worked with him or trained with him. I don't think he was, like, his teacher or nothing like oh, that. Okay. I'm not sure. Like I said, he started training wow. a bunch of people. Because yeah, cause Return of the Dragon, when that came out, that was, like, what, his, that was Bruce Lee's third movie. That's mind-blowing. Take, we get the game of death one day. That's gonna be real mind blowing for you because that was made at, put out after he died, and they did all kind of weird tricks to make it look like he was in the movie. It's fucking weird, man. They at one point used a cardboard cutout for his face. <laughs> and you know, remember, this is like like late seventies, early eighties. I forget which one, but this is like seventies tech too, so it looks bad. Oh, for his face, it's not like the bell in your face, face. <laughs> Wow. Oh, real quick too, PJ, before we get into the episode, since I'm already talking a lot in the beginning, I got some movies from my dad. My dad has legit, like, I don't know if you remember, PJ, remember my dad had that little bookcase by the TV with the DVDs in it? I actually do. Yes, sir. Remember how a lot of them hadn't even been opened yet? Yes. They're still not open yet. You are now the now. inheritor. I took four of them. Some of them I didn't, oh. some of them I already had, but there's two in particular, PJ, that will be hustles uh-huh. because you've been wanting to hustle. One has been brought up. One of we quote a line from constantly on this show. The other one I mentioned before that I haven't seen it before and you got mad at me and I own it now. Okay. It's four movies. I'm going to get the lesser ones out the way first. I got U.S. Marshals, which is the sequel to The mm-hmm. Fugitive. That's Tommy Lee Jones chasing Wesley Snipes around. I would like to see that. I got the Miami Vice movie with Jamie Foxx and Colin Farrell. I've seen part of that. There you go. I've never seen it. I love the show, but I've never seen the movie. Mm-hmm. Um... I don't know which one of these to say first. All right. Uh, which would you rather hear? The one we quote a lot or what, or the one I haven't seen before? Which one would you like to know first? Uh, the one you quote a lot. I got training day here at the house. Oh, shit. And it's unopened. Every, mo- every movie except the one I'm about to tell you now is still shrink-wrapped. And, some- and training day has been shrink-wrapped since I was in middle school, PJ. <laughs> <laughs> that I've seen it. Fuck. All right. You ready? Okay. Yes. Inside Man. Let's go! Come on, Denzel. <laughs> okay. Never seen it before. And it's a Spike Lee joint. Yes. Hype about that. I knew he would. That's why I was like, like which one you want to hear first? <laughs> oh, I'm excited now. So all four of those are now in my possession, PJ, so they can be hustled now. Okay. People that don't know where the reference come from can finally find out where pushed in, bro, comes from. Never had your shit pushed in. <laughs> That's yeah. still one of my favorite. I know, you know, everybody always quotes like, you know, the King Kong ain't got nothing on me and all them other shit. Like, that was always the quotable for me is your boy with the most serious tone just looked at your man's was like, you ever had your shit pushed in? <laughs> your shit pushed in. Simple question. Nah? Yeah. I had my shit pushed in. Oh, yeah, man. I had my shit pushed in, bro. Big time. <laughs> <laughs> man, when I take the fucking tears I had as a kid laughing at that shit. That's funny. Training Day come out. Hold on. What's the year on this shit? 2001. I was 10 years old laughing my ass off at that line, bro. <laughs> I saw it right when you gave videotape. Wow. I probably didn't see that until I was 14, 15. Wow. Well, well, I guess I can't say parents because my dad was more strict. But I had a mother that was not very strict with what I watched. So she would watch a tape. And if I happened to come in the room, it wasn't like, hey, get out of here. It's like, hey, you can't. Almost how I said with you and your boy, where it's like with AVP, it's like, you can't ask to watch the movie and then be big pussy. Yeah. yeah. If you want to watch the movie, watch the fucking movie. If you want to watch it, get the fuck out. Right. This is what you want right here. Exactly. So that's what it was. And then I heard that line. And he was a kid. 
fucking laugh my ass off. Let's tell you what kind of kid I was. Nah. <laughs> if you didn't know by now, this is episode 151 now. If you don't know me by now, you never, never, never will. Oh, PJ. Yes. Speaking of songs, what should we do right now? It's been 11 minutes. Wow. Theme music. Finally. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? I'm Brent. I'm PJ. And I'm the Spirit. And this is the motherfucking home video hustle where we do what, PJ? Hustle, motherfucking hustle. Goddamn right. And this is going to be, I don't, I think this is going to be the first time I've ever done this. Peek behind the curtain. Now, I take that back. I have done it before, but this is even bigger gap. Behind the curtain, like I said, we're talking mm-hmm. about Die Hard with a Vengeance, a.k.a. Die Hard 3. Mm-hmm. And I had watched it already because we were supposed to do this way back. Mm-hmm. And I took notes. And I still have those notes. You want to know what date are on these notes, PJ? What date is on that note? January 5th, 2020. Really? Yeah, over three months ago. January 5th. Now it's when we're supposed to record that shit. Huh. I did not rewatch this movie at all okay. since January 5th, 2020. Okay. And you know enough why, folks? Because you know this movie? I've seen this movie so many goddamn times. Okay. And I think <laughs> I even... Re- I think I watched it with... No, you were with me when I... So, so yeah, it has been since January because Spirit watched it with me. She has seen it before. This was her second time watching it. So even she has seen it multiple times. I've seen it, I think, three times with you. Oh, there you go. See? That's what I'm saying. See, look, three times. That's how much I've watched this movie. Spoiler, had, I guess, for the score, Because I think we've had three Christmases together now. Oh, yeah, this is And like, we did, when the our first Christmas, we went on a, a Die Hard spree. Kind of. Well, the first Christmas... Well, I don't know. We watched the should... first one, but the next day, okay, like days after, we watched say, it. I was, okay, yeah. And I'm pretty sure we've watched it every year because you like the first one to watch for Christmas, but my favorite one's the third one. Well, I can tell you for a fact, like, if we're talking about Christmas, every fucking Christmas Eve, I watch Die Hard 1 and 2, but not 3 because that takes place in the summer, but Die Hard 1 and 2 are Christmas movies. Suck it! <laughs> Everybody who says otherwise. I don't care. Yes. I'll tell you what. If you don't agree, it's fine. I don't, well, I don't even care no more. You can go watch It's a Wonderful Life and go cry in the corner and shit. I'm watching you get lit the fuck up, all right? That's what we're going to have It's a Wonderful Life. We will end that discussion for Eric because people are like, oh, man, I'm so sick of hearing that discussion. It's fine. Like I said, go cry in the corner and hug on your nuts or something. And I will yes. watch people get lit the fuck up and enjoy my damn Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just being an asshole. I'm just going to, like, how you doing that? Hug on your is, ex- is a super roundabout way to say jerk off and cry in the corner. But, see, I tried to be oh. more different, not just say, hey, go to jerk off. Like, hey, go hug your nuts. I don't know. I'm trying to do shit. Okay. Politically correct right there. That on a t-shirt. There you go. Yeah, go <laughs> get a t-shirt and hey. hug your nuts and cry in the corner. <laughs> Dash. <laughs> home video hustle. Hug your nuts. Yeah. Starting out wonderfully, PJ. Guess what? What? I think I said already, but I'm going to say it again. This is episode 151. We have passed 150 Apex. It is now on to 200 now. Woot woot. No, it's on to infinity. Fuck I mean, 200. I mean, just until the next thing. But ah. yes, yeah, the hustle don't stop. Fuck that. Yes. Be 80 years old tomorrow. Here, go jack off and cry in the cone. <laughs> 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 That'll be the time one of us clocks out, too. Like, ah, his last words. Fuck. P. PJ. <laughs> Nope. That's all I got. Ah, tell my son it was real. Shit, by that point, Felix probably be on the mic too. Right? Oh my. See, oh, see, I don't have a kid, but I about to say, like, I don't know, like Anthony, my nephew or something, and Felix can continue the home video hustle after us and shit. It could never ah. stop. Ah, I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I have no lineage after me. After I die, I'm gone. Old school dies with me. But somebody Wait, can. What's up? What the, somebody, no, of course, your brother. I was about to say, somebody got to have a kid. Your brother. Oh, that's what I was talking about my nephew, yeah. <laughs> we're yes, we're good. Him okay. and Felix can continue the hustle. Yes. They can find another spirit somewhere called the Ghostbusters and shit. 
I mean, I got four siblings. One of them is bound to have a kid. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I am unfit to be parents. One of them talking about she want to have a kid within the next, what, five years. She's like, I'm not waiting until I'm old. That's I'm what everybody 30. says. Everybody's like, oh, man, you had a kid around almost 30, man. That's too old, nigga. You're going to be all old as shit when they graduate in high school. Jokes on them, because guess asses. what? They're not having no kids. <laughs> exactly. I don't have to worry about how old I'm going to be for the graduation, because guess what? There won't be a fucking graduation. Yes, Suck it. For, well, for you. Yeah. Huh? Well, when she graduates, college. no, I'm talking about for my students because I'm BT. Oh, that yeah, so I'm, I'm talking about for us in terms of us having children. Yeah, but you gonna? Yeah, I was about to say, uh oh, so I was like, y'all conflicting right now. Fur babies don't graduate. Get out! Talking about fur babies. Get off the mic. School. I'm taking the mic from you. Training in school. They have puppy training school. You can graduate. If, we, if I'm ever at home, you tell me. Oh, we gotta go to the graduation. I'm like, all right, and it's for I don't know fluffers, whatever. The fuck. I'm like, I'm I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> um, that'll be what you divorce me over. I'm done. I'm sorry. Like I'm, I'm grabbing my coat and I'm leaving. No, the fuck you not. <laughs> you just hear the hear the footsteps in your car. He was never seen again. <laughs> so I make a movie about my life. He says that's that how now. it ends, and it's just like a black screen. It just says, and he was never seen again. He says that now. But like when I had my dog Fifi, rest in peace. He used to be all over her. Like she. Nope. She was all over me. Okay, but you because were... the bitches love me. Even... Oh! Don't don't cry. Oh, Ain't that a female dog? <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But... I'm using the proper term, unlike I all know. you fucking ne'er do wells out here. <laughs> I know, but no, like Brent and Fifi was like Fifi, like had never been in my room so damn much except for when Brent came over. I just she told started, you why. She started getting upset with me, like she was jealous of how much time I was spending with Brent, exactly. and she would be like pushing me away and be all cuddled up. To, like she would literally get between us in bed mm-hmm. and then like put her back on him. And be like all snuggled up to him and then start pushing her feet against me to push me away. Get the fuck out the bed. This is me and him, right? You leave. And that and, and, and Brent encouraged that. So I feel like if we yeah, have I a thought dog, it was funny. I was like, yeah, yeah, I've taken over you. It's my shit now. But so I feel like if we have another dog, Brent's gonna be all in love and well, you gotta... duties and whatnot. What you say, P? Said you need a girl. You need to like show your soft side. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Listen, she tries to get me to do that on this podcast all the time, and then I make bad jokes, and then it all goes away. Die Hard Avengers, you know what year it came out? Uh, Sam was still young, so... Yeah. I don't... 2000? I want to say this one. Go ahead. It came out in the greatest year. That's why I knew she was going to say that. Because it's also the year I was born. It came out in uh, 1995. 95. Yeah. Two hours and eight minutes long. PJ, you saw it twice. How much do you think it cost to make? Uh, I don't know. They had some explosions in that bitch. So, uh, yeah, yeah, a smooth ten mil, smooth ten. Ooh, you gotta go way hard. Like you say, explosions cost money, Playboy. Uh, okay, uh, a smooth fifty mil. You still gotta go up higher. Oh, Spirit, what you think? Ninety mil. Damn, she came in and crushed you, P. It's ninety million. Oh damn, I didn't even know. <laughs> uh, I see the telepathy that's going on between you two right now. <laughs> so fast. fix it's a fix no because i was just like you said you gotta go way higher and i was like i feel like it wasn't a hundred mil i was like but because it was the third one and the first two made money i feel like they're gonna put some money. money in it mm-hmm. this so, is a summer blockbuster right here yeah so i was like uh, eh, I'm, I'm gonna go under 100 and pj i just gave you a big hint to how much it made when i said summer blockbuster so how much you think it made pj 150 million way higher than that spirit <laughs> fuck <laughs> Um, 300 mil? It's 300 and something. I will give y'all both a big hint. PJ. Am I going to PJ it? 315 mil. Oh, it's higher than 15. Spirit. Okay. 360 mil. All right. PJ. 375. No, no. See, let me finish. You fucking up. (laughs) (laughs) It's 306 what? 36 what? Give me another number. 36 what? 369. No. Lower. Spirit. (laughs) Yeah. Um, that was a female reaction right there. Nah. <laughs> um, three, six, two. Higher, PJ, 360 what? Five. Higher, spirit. God damn it. Three, six, seven. Oh my God, PJ, lower. Oh shit. Six. She PJ'd it. You didn't say a little higher. No, I you just know, said higher. Because he said seven at first, and then you said like five or whatever the hell y'all just did. Y'all should have been yeah. able to know by now. I'm trying to help y'all out. 
You fucking PJ. Usually did. You no said, excuses. No, I didn't. PJ no. can usually be like no a little excuses. bit higher, a little bit lower. You didn't say that. But because so. he said nine, and then he said five, and then he said seven, or whatever the hell y'all just did. No. Use your fucking powers of inference. Because he said nine, you said lower, so I said nope, two. Too late. PJ I got it. Two. 366 I'm not saying he didn't get it, but dollars. I didn't PJ it. Leave me alone. He PJ it. I PJ. I don't want to PJ yeah. you. What you think you got on IMDb out of 10, bro? It's something point six. so if you say the number or round it up, I don't care. Just give me a number. Eight. <laughs> Seven point six. so I'll give you that because I rounded up. <laughs> All right. Critics on Rotten Tomatoes out of 100%. PJ, what you think they gave uh, blockbuster summer. Let's go a seven. It's the critics though, out of one hundred percent, seventy. Lower spirit. Ah, sixty-three. Lower PJ. Wow. Right, it's not. Out, it's rotten. I'll tell you that. Damn. What'd you say, PJ? Fifty-five. Uh, it's a little bit lower spirit. Fifty-four. A little bit lower PJ. Oh, damn. Come on. <laughs> come on. Close, 50, come on. Fifty-three. Very slightly lower spirit. Ah, you PJ it. Y'all both PJ and shit. Fifty two percent from the critics, which is rotten. Mm. The critics didn't fuck with it, but what you think the audience gave it, PJ? Okay, that gotta be a seventy five. It's higher spirit. Eighty two. Okay. Very slightly higher, PJ. Eighty three. Eighty three from the audience. That's fresh. I'd be getting pretty close with my guesses though. You do. Like yeah. the dartboard, I'd be pretty good at darts. Let me see what the consensus is from the critics on Ron. Oh, yes, I had it pulled up. Let me see. It says, Die Hard Avengers benefits from Bruce Willis and Samuel Jackson's barbed interplay, but clatters to a bombastic finish in a vain effort to cover up an overall lack of fresh ideas. Shots mm. fired. I mean, it kind of is the same storyline all over. Like, bad guys wanting to blow up a building. All right, fun facts about Die Hard 3. Y'all ready for this? I was going to save it to later, but since you said that, I'm going to throw it out there now. Mm-hmm. Yes. This was not written as a Die Hard movie. Hmm. Originally, this was a script. Little, they call them spec scripts where they just throw them out there to see who get picked up or whatever. It was for a movie called Simon Says, which you should both see. I guess. Ah. Yeah. Which, ah. funny ah. enough, there is a movie called Simon Says that's, uh, that stars fucking, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Dennis Rodman. I forgot his name for a second. Really? Dennis Rodman that's did cool. action movies, PJ, for a while. He did at least two of them. That's because the bad guy's name was Simon. Right? Yes, we'll do him one day, PJ. Yes, because yeah, because and he kept saying Simon says do this. Mm-hmm. So yeah, oh, Simon didn't say. <laughs> Another fun fact, you know, we actually skipped over Die Hard two now because we did one and missed. But Die Hard two was also not written as a Die Hard movie. It was a, it was based off of a book that they just turned into a Die Hard movie. Wow, fun fact. Yes, Die Hard four. Was not written as a well. I think it was written as a Die Hard movie, but it's based off a fucking internet article. <laughs> so the only, or a newspaper article or something. So the only one that was really written and based to be a Die Hard movie was the first one. Fun fact: oh, the original Die Hard is based off of a book called "Nothing Lives Forever." So none of them were <laughs> Die Hard. So, so where the fuck did this franchise come from? It came from the book called "Nothing Lives Forever." Now, um, well, actually. Fun fact. Oh, shit. There was a Die Hard movie before Die Hard because there was a movie based off of the book that based Hard was, that, whoa, that Die Hard was based off of. It was called The Detective and it starred Frank Sinatra. Wow. All the fun facts. You can tell I love Die Hard, don't you? So this is a remake. Wow. Reimagining, I guess. Because Die Hard, like, nobody remembers The Detective. Everybody knows Die Hard. Another fun fact. Fuck it, since I'm throwing them out there, there's a fucking book or a comic book called Die Hard Year One that's a prequel to the original Die Hard. Prequel to the original. Yes, a comic book form. Fun fact: There's supposed to be another Die Hard movie coming out sometime soon. That's po- supposedly going to be a prequel and a sequel at the same time. So, so John, current John McClane doing shit, and then flashbacks of young young John McClane doing shit. How the fuck are you going to do that? I don't know. That's it hasn't. It's been talked about for years, probably almost a decade now. And hasn't you happened getting kind of too old for this shit now? Yeah, well, Danny Glover was too old for that shit too, and he did four Lethal Weapon movies. Oh! There's a reference for people that get it. <laughs> he, he also beat a predator there. too, being old. What you say, Lord? I'm just saying he getting up there. He he looking like he didn't, you know, well, gone through Bruce it a Willis bit. Bruce Willis been around since like the fucking eighties, I think. I so know yeah. it's been forty years. Now, how old is Bruce Willis? Now, man, we it's almost a half hour in, bro. Fuck it, come on, let's go. How old is Bruce Willis? This is great podcasting. Oh, it's just two Bruce Willis movies in a row too. No, it's not because we did Sonic. My bad, I forgot about Sonic. What was the other one we did? What did we just Pulp do? Fiction. Yeah, his two I, his two movies that come up first, Die Hard and Pulp Fish. That's crazy. I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get these two confused. 
Like some parts. What Die like Hard I'm a... and fucking Pulp Fiction? Yep. Hey Siri. Yep. Why? Some of the parts. I don't know. Bruce Willis. It's fifty six. Fifty six. Sixty five. Yep. There you go. Wow. Born in West Germany. Oh shit! I forgot to say too. This is a Patreon pick too. I forgot. Oh. It's from Nicole, aka Miss Neek, aka Soup Complex Wifey, Superiority Complex. What's going down, everybody? Hey. Going. Thank you for this movie. She um she said I think when I asked her about why she gave us this movie, she said because she loves buddy buddy cop type movies or buddy movies. Mm-hmm. And she didn't want to torture us like a lot. You know that's the thing. Nobody has really tortured us except for Brendan. Hmm. I think. <laughs> what was that? Can of Wall no no that was us that was actually you you did that but he did that Why? dance and singing it was uh from justin to kelly yeah oh yeah that was brendan that was the first patreon pick and he's he's, he's he keeps changing up what his next one's gonna be and they're all bad again PJ. was that before or after i had them do the uh, corbin blue movie that was before i think that okay. was their your revenge okay yeah that makes sense then pj mm. yes this movie's directed by john mctiernan but what else did he do he Anything? A bunch of act- he did Predator, the original one. Oh shit! He also did Crimes because I think he's in fucking jail right now. <laughs> <I don't laughs> <think> so, <laughs> well, he was. I'll say. I don't know if he still is. What did he do? I don't remember. No. I can look it up though. Fuck, we didn't look the very damn thing up. I'm looking up something right now. Let's see, John McTiernan. What did you do? Oh, he did Rollerball remake. I forgot about Rollerball. All right, he did um. Movie called Nomads, Predator, the original Die Hard, so he came back for the third one. I forgot he did do Die Hard one. Um, Hot for Red October, Medicine Man, Last Action Hero, which we will do one day, PJ. Die okay. Hard with Avengers, the Thomas Crown Affair remake, the Thirteenth Warrior, Rollerball, and Basics. So a bunch of action movies. What did he do to go to jail? Oh yeah, let me find out. Let me see. Yeah, right. Is it gonna come up here? Of course not. I might do Wikipedia. I feel like it's like shit. money laundering or something like that. John... That white collar crime. You say money laundering? I say, yeah, I, something like that along those lines. Seems about right. I see. All right. On April 3rd, 2006, McTiernan was charged in federal court with making a false statement to an FBI investigator in February 06 about the hiring of the private investigator and Gates or private investigator, God damn it, Anthony Pelicano to illegally wiretap Charles Roven, the producer of the film Rollerball, around August 2000. McTiernan had been in a disagreement about with Roven about what type of film Rollerball should be and had hired Pelicano to investigate his intentions and actions. He asked Pelicano to try and find instances where Roven made negative remarks about the studio execs or said things to others that were inconsistent with what he said to the studio. He was arraigned and pleaded guilty on April 17, 2006 as part of an initial plea bargain agreement to cooperate with prosecutors in exchange for lenient treatment. Snitching! Sorry. <clears throat> <laughs> prosecutors said they they then became convinced that he was continuing to lie to them and that he had also held, hired Pelicano to wiretap somebody else and it says in brackets uh-huh. here probably his estranged, estranged wife Donna Dubrow during her 1997 divorce in brackets prompting them to stay uh-huh. a prison sentence he didn't hire a new counsel and tried to withdraw his guilty plea saying that his prior counsel had, had not conducted a proper discovery in the case and had not presented him with the available defense approach of suppressing as evidence the conversation with him that Pelicano had recorded on August 17, 2000 however this bid was denied by the district judge who immediately proceeded to sentence him to four months in prison and a hundred thousand dollars in fines okay so he didn't say that long the judge characterized McTiernan as someone who thought he was quote above the law he had no remorse and quote lived a privileged life that simply wants to continue and simply wants to continue that now that sounds about right he was ordered to surrender to incarceration by january 15 2008 but was allowed to remain out of prison on bail pending an appeal to the ninth circuit court of appeals it's still going in october 2008 the ninth circuit court of appeals vacated mcturnan's four month sentence and ruled that judge fisher had erred and he was entitled to erred. a hear there you go erred and that was entitled to a hearing as to whether his plea could be withdrawn. Blah, 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 blah. His plea was withdrawn on February 24th. The case was reopened. I'm trying to sum this. It's a lot of shit, man. Uh, Sends him to one year in prison, three years of supervised probation, a fine of 100000 Damn, it's going all the way to 2012. It's still going? Hold on. All right, here he goes. McTiernan surrendered to federal prison on April 3rd, 2013 to serve a stated 12-month sentence in the federal prison camp Yankton in Yankton, South Dakota, a minimum security former college campus Holding about 800 military, mainly white collar. Oh, I so say he, he went to celebrity prison then. Yeah. I knew it was white collar, whatever he did. Oh, what the fuck? There's something else. Invasion of privacy civil suit. Oh, as far as the wife shit they was talking about. 
He also fought for bank bankruptcy while in prison in 2013. Of course, a lot, a lot going on there. So I way more than that. I just skipped a well, whole. It wasn't bunch of laundering, shit. but it was white collar shit. Yeah, and he didn't serve a ton of time. He stretched that shit out from what did say 06 to 2013. I mean, you know, leave wiretap into politicians. Hired a private investigator. He's like, nah, we're going to get some dirt on them motherfuckers. They're right. trying to ruin my movie you, that critics didn't like anyway. You hired the wrong one because your dude snatched, snitched you out like a mofo. You, I don't know how you got caught, but you obviously didn't hire the right one. Let's see if it was all worth it. Let's see what the, how much Rollerball even fucking made at the theater because I'm pretty sure it didn't do great. <laughs> all right, real quick. I ain't going to have y'all go back and forth like this, but just one guess. How much did y'all think Rollerball cost to make? If he went through all this trouble, PJ. How much you think he paid for it? Or the studio or whatever? 15 mil. Okay, you say 15. What about you, Spirit? 13. Rollerball cost $70 million. Oh, damn. Oh, shit. How much you think it made at the box office? 12. 12? 10? Mm-hmm. On a $70 million budget, it made $25 million. Super mm-hmm. biggity bomb, 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 bomb. All that wiretapping yeah. and jail time bullshit for a movie that didn't even make money. Take that L, man. Take that L. So, yeah, that's director John McTiernan. There you go. I don't know if I should throw allegedly in there because it's on the fucking internet, but sure, allegedly, whatever. I don't fucking know. But, PJ, this is starring Bruce Willis, Samuel L. motherfucking Jackson, Jeremy Irons, Graham Greene, Colleen Camp, Larry Brigman, Sam Phillips, and I'm not writing no more than that. Okay. So, right off the bat, first Die Hard was in L.A., second Die Hard was in D.C. We're in fucking New York, PJ. Mm-hmm. And you got this hot child, something in the city. That song playing in the background, showing everybody, you know, walking around, going to stores, the little hot dog vendor dudes out there slinging hot dogs and shit. Everything is nice. It's a nice summer day, PJ. <laughs> yes. Boom. Is he in Harlem? Shake, shake the room. Not yet. He, he goes to Harlem. I remember that. Yeah, it was, yeah we're going to talk about that scene. That scene's hilarious to me. But explosion. Shit's flipping over. Motherfuckers are like just rock and rubble everywhere. Shit's crazy, son. So he's starting out last like what has to be like what two minutes into the movie yeah. already got one explosion. Police are going ape shit. Everybody's in the studio going crazy. You get the first phone call from the homie Simon and he's looking for John McClane. He's like, I want to talk to fucking McClane. I don't care where he's at. Get McClane. And McClane? fun fact, PJ. Sorry. Yeah. Catch y'all because I got to hit PJ. With, I got a bomb for you, PJ. Now you're a fan of the Lion King, right? Yes. You know, the dude that plays Simon is a guy named Jeremy Irons. Think about his voice for a second and think about the Lion King at the same time. Because he voiced a character in the Lion King. Simon says he was he's not Scar. Yes, he is, PJ. Oh shit. <laughs> I <was gonna> say. <laughs> that Simon in this movie is Scar in the Lion King. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I had to throw that one in there as so I was like, I bet you he don't know that. <laughs> he pretty paid there. Oh, yeah, he has, he has a bunch of movies and shit. I got a couple of them here. We had to do Dungeons and Dragons one day. That shit's horrible. And he's in that movie. Like the board game? Yes, they made a movie of that shit. And it has, oh, wow. I think it has Marlon Wayans in it, too. Mm. Oh, I'm trying to see. Yeah. yeah See what that's up. Oh, one day. One day. Great A trash. But they go and pick up John McClane, PJ. You can tell he's all beat up and shit. At this point, like, at the end of Die Hard 2... He was with his wife, Holly. They, you know, survived the terrorist shit at the airport. They're all hugging and everything. And it's all, you know, happy ending type shit. And this movie is like, no, nope. none of that. Divorce. You're <laughs> fucked. You are on your own. You're a fucking alcoholic. You got a bad hangover the whole movie. You look like shit. It's mm-hmm. all bad for your boy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what he's happens in... when you lose a good woman. There you go. So he's in the car. Or he's there. They got him in a truck, actually. My bad, not a car. Because they're even telling him, like, yo, you look like shit. And he's like, hey, tell me something. I don't know. You know, some shit. Like, whatever. Fuck. And they yes. get this little sign to wear. And they put him out in Harlem. Because this is what Simon wants him to do. And they're like, yo, it's all good. We got, you know, people. Or what's this shit? Backup. We got backup around the corner. They can be here in, like, five minutes. And he tells them something. Like, he's like, yo, don't worry about it. I'll be dead in, like, two minutes. Mm-hmm. And you don't know why yet. But you just see him with this fucking sandwich board sign. What did you say, PJ? Nothing. I said, yeah. He said, we'll be back in 15 minutes. And he was like, yeah, I'll be dead by then. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we'll tell you why in a second, but not yet. You got to hold that suspense. Because we were introduced to Samuel L. Jackson. Because he has, mm-hmm. what was he? Or these his nephews, right? Mm-hmm. I oh, think so. Yep, Uncle Zeus. Yes. They bring him a radio. And they're like, hey, you know, such and such gave us his radio to pawn. He's like, oh, yeah, where you get it from? You bringing me stolen shit now? He said, you shouldn't yeah. just let people use you, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, before he tells them they need to get to school, but before they go to school, he has them say like I guess their their family mantra. I guess yeah. you would say. Yeah. Mantra. Do you remember what it was, PJ? Because it's fucking hilarious. 
Oh, I got I got to find a clip then. Hold on, <laughs> as I gotta play. I'm gonna play clips live on the mic right now for this one. I ain't going back to editing later. We want to hear it now. <laughs> oh shit! There you go, PJ. That was it. Now, real quick, I know before, the spirit has words about. Before that. we move on from that, I want to explain <laughs> to uh, some of the listeners who uh, might be of the paler side to why well, the Caucasian persuasion. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna talk to my to my white people real quick. Mm-hmm. All right. The reason why minorities, especially black people are hesitant and reluctant to receive help from white people is because throughout history, the quote-unquote help that has been received from uh, white people have been shrouded in in a lot of lies, uh, misleading, and just really just uh, manipulation. Like you have the um, idea of, for instance, projects were initially regarded to black people as, oh, we're giving you cheaper housing. We're um, setting you up to where you can be successful and you don't have to worry and be so stressed about housing and all that. What it really was, it, it was a, a mandate and a, and a tool used for uh, redlining, for segregation that was to keep black people in projects and in ghettos and those uh, places eventually became dilapidated and um, there wasn't much resource and funding so you got ghettos and crimes and stuff going on but yeah and then there's just a lot of things that throughout history like for instance the you know white people with the Native Americans you know we're going to come and we're going to um, help you by giving you these goods and you're going to help us and you know the entire time they were you know making the Native Americans alcoholics giving them diseases and killing their people so that's why there's a history of not trusting white people it's not because you're white it's because you know history has taught us that we got to be skeptical of people sometimes that's a whole little sub thing in this movie like subtext like i don't know if it's, i don't know because they don't go deep into it that's the whole thing in the movie is that samuel jackson i guess will learn to be, trust the white folks aka john mcclain throughout the movie because at first they kind of butt heads a lot and shit and there's even a point where i forget where exactly that happens where he's like because even bruce was like yo trust me because you're, i'm white or something like that and they go into a whole little art it's like i think it's the part with the two fucking water jugs i'll get to it mm-hmm. there's a whole little thing going on with that but not like majorly mm-hmm just a little sub context, yeah. Yeah, it's a little taste. Yeah, underlying. There you go. But uh, before the kids leave, they're they're like, "Yo, you got to see this shit." And he's like, "What's happening?" He's like, "It's a white guy out there." And he's like, "I've seen a bunch of white guys." He's like, "Not like this." Mm-hmm. And so your boy Samuel Jackson goes to the door, and then you see that the fucking sandwich board that John McClane has on says, "What PJ?" Uh, something about niggers. What does it, it say? It says, I hate niggers. Ha! There we go. And he dropped him off in Harlem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So people that don't know that would like the the what's the word I'm looking for the significance of that. <laughs> that's a super black area, folks. It's blackity black black. You will get fucked up. I'm surprised he didn't get fucked up before this. Speaking of Harlem, if you're interested in black history, look up the Harlem Renaissance. You won't be disappointed. Mm. If they're long time listeners, they've heard all about it before. <laughs> oh, there was even a scene before that too where they showed they because they're making him walk up. Simon's making him walk up and down the street, and there's like an old black woman that sees him. And he kind of has a look on his face like, "God damn it!" And because she, she mugs the shit out of him. But um, Samuel Jackson walks up to him. He's like, "Yo, were you good?" And he like they start going back and forth. But then um, he's like, "Cause oh yeah 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 yeah," because he's like, "Yo." You got to get the fuck into my shop before the motherfuckers see you because there's a big group of young cats right there. But right before he gets to get him into the shop, one of them, like, they got a basketball, it, like, rolls away. And when he goes to grab it, in the background, you just hear, what the fuck? Huh. Yeah, too late. 
He's about to get shot, basically, and then Sam. What? What has? How does he wind up? What does Sam do? Well, he tells Samuel Jackson he's a cop. Now he's got a gun on his back, and Samuel Jackson's like, "Yo, just basically play crazy." He's like, "You know, Looney Tunes, motherfucker." Ha! Yeah, yeah. Unless you want them to fucking. So what does he say? He winds up. I know he winds up doing it. <laughs> well, the guy throws a knife at his uh. And his board. Well, because Samuel Jackson's like, yeah, they're like, yo, this is friendly yours. He's like, I don't know who this is. You know, I think he just came from one of them crit nut like, houses, you know, like, like Bellevue. I know this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bruce Willis starts saying all kind of weird, crazy shit just because he starts yelling. He's like, I got a very bad headache. Huh? And that's when the dude, I think, throws a knife and they like cut up on his board. And one dude just starts throwing the basketball up against the side of his head and shit. And, um, <laughs> I think you'll be a Zeus in or yeah, because Samuel Jackson's character's name is Zeus. I forgot to say that. But he ends up I getting cut because uh, one of them pulls out a blade and they cut his hand. And then he like he's like, oh, what the fuck? And that's when he sees the gun on John McClane's back. He pulls it out and he just tells him, well, get the fuck back. And right. They fuck his jack a taxi cab. And uh, yeah, they bang out. And that's when you get introduced. He's like, yo, my name is Zeus and all this other type of shit. Back at the police station. They're the, the uh, what do you call them? Terrorists. Damn, I can't think of the words today. Terrorists had these bombs that are basically like. It's a fluid on the left and a fluid on the right. And when them fluids mix together, it's a bad motherfucking time, bruh. You don't want that shit to mix together. So I think this is where the one, the goofy little detective dude does a test where he has like a paper clip and he puts some on the end, of, uh, both on the end. He throws it at a chair and it explodes that bitch like into the air. So now you know bombs are bad. Mm. Remember that shit. Yes. <laughs> Bombs are bad. The liquids cannot mix. Yes, that's right. You don't want your light and the dark liquor to mix. Shit's bad. I'll tell you from first-hand experience. Yeah. I'm sure PJ came too. Have you ever done that, PJ? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, you know I'm me. not the only <laughs> fool here, then, that mixed no. light and dark liquor. Like, oh, what, what's the no. worst that can happen? Right? I didn't know. It was like, it was like college days, and I didn't... Hold on, let me bring her ass inside. Here we go. <laughs> College days, I didn't know why every time I would drink to a light and dark liquor, I would feel bad, but I just knew it was a thing. And then come to find out, you know, that's just, it doesn't set well in the stomach. Yeah, you super fucked. I just realized I fucked up too. This is not episode 151. This is episode 152. I keep forgetting about the fucking Sonic episode. I don't know why. <laughs> Has that come out yet? No, that's probably why I keep oh, forgetting. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, we recording this the day after Easter, so that shit ain't even came out yet. Damn. So, yes, this is 152, my bad, folks. Yeah. Um, Simon calls, and he's, you know, doing riddles and shit, and John McClane talks smart to him on the phone. They got, like, a little, uh, what do you call that shit? Like, he's, like, a psychiatrist or something, because he's telling them, like, yo, the way he talks, the way he stutters, you know, all this other type of shit. But then, mm -hmm. since he got involved, now Simon also wants Samuel Jackson to play part in this shit, too, because Samuel Jackson says something smart to him, and he hangs up, and they're mad. They're like, yo, you better hope he calls back, motherfucker. Yeah, and they're like, he will. He'll definitely call back. This guy's game. We know him. We've met this type before. Yeah, we know all about you, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he does call back. And that's what he tells him, like, yo, I need both of y'all. And at first, your boy Zeus is like, nah, nah, fuck you. I ain't dealing with this shit. I'm going back. Them dudes is probably tearing up my shop. But then John yeah. McClane tells him a lie, though. He's like, yo, you know that bomb they talked about that they found? He's like, yeah. He's like, you know where they found that out? Or where they found it at? He's like, I don't remember exactly where, but basically, they found that shit in the hood, bro. He's like, this ain't no color thing. It's a, it's a bad guy thing or some shit like that. I don't know. Basically, he's lied to him to persuade him to help him out. I like that paraphrasing right there. <laughs> there you go. I'm I'm good at that shit. <laughs> they get to a payphone. Well, he tells them to go to a payphone. They got to walk there. And they get to the payphone. There's a woman on the phone that won't get off of it. And Samuel Jackson likes to yell. They're like, girl, get off the goddamn phone. <laughs> is this where, yes, this is where he tricks him. He tells him, a, you know, he has a do a riddle. You got to. You got so much time to figure out the riddle, and the riddle, the answer is like the last four numbers that they need to call back. It's like five, 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 bet, 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 bet. So they sit there and figure it out. But you find out that Zeus is good as fuck with numbers here. Because John mm -hmm. is bugging out like, I don't know what this shit is. And he keeps telling McClane, yo, shut the fuck up, I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. And then he tells him the answer, right? When he's about to dial it, he's like, hangs up. He's like, no, wait. He's like, I fucked up. So he's like, the answer is actually one. So just type in like five, 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 zero, 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 one. But then mm -hmm. they they get the answer. They know they're like, oh yeah, give us something harder next time. Ha ha ha! And he's like, yo, but you late. And they're like, what? No, no, we gave the answer. Up. And they tell everybody, yo, dump this a bomb in the trash can. And then nothing. Mm -hmm. And your boy, they Simon's on the phone laughing. Simon didn't say. He's like, I didn't say Simon says, bitch. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now, now they got to get to. I'm pretty sure that they got to get to the subway, and they got a limited amount of time to get there through New York traffic. So how are they gonna get there, PJ? How are they gonna get there? What well, are going to steal a taxi cab, PJ? <laughs> or, I think ah. it's, well, did they steal another one or is it the same? Got this I don't actually remember. But yeah, they're about to have to drive through fucking Central Park 
then your boy's going like crazy, driving all through traffic and through sidewalks and every damn thing. Because your boy's like, yo, you can't drive through the park. It's going to be super busy. And your John McClane's like, yo, I didn't mean through the park. I meant through the park, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Using the bumper because that's what it's for. Over the grassy, grassy knoll. <laughs> there you go. But they get to the train or they get to like one spot and they have to split up because John McClane's like, yo, I can get to some spot from here. You go down to the other way and you intercept them there. You do some shit. You go, you go to the phone. I'll find the bomb. That's what he said. Mm hmm. And while yeah, so John's in the subway, right? Yeah, but before uh, Samuel Jackson drives off, there's some dude that gets into the back of the taxi cab thinking he's an actual cab. And uh, he Samuel Jackson trying to tell him, like, yo, uh, you know, it's not a real cab. You can't get in here. And the dude's like, oh, I, well, it's the taxi cab your light is on. He's like, well, do you not like white people? And he boy, <laughs> immediately mood changed. He's like, where you need to go? He's like, well, okay, I got you. And he just speeds the fuck off. And yes, now, PJ, your boy is down there trying to get the bomb. Tell him about him trying to get the bomb, PJ. Uh, so he's going cart to cart, train to train. Uh, trying not to freak people out, and he finally makes it to the like front car, and the bomb is it's like attached to the like a cell phone or not phone, but like a little emergency phone box. Yeah, yeah, that's right do up near the. Do you have those things on subways? I've never been on the subway they before. Do. Yes, they. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, because he 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 knows it's fake. Cause he like taps on it and it slides like it's being held together by a big magnet. So he he tells everybody he's like, yeah, yo, can you, can you step aside? Like get the fuck out the way. And he opens it, and that's when he sees the chemical. So he's like, yo, everybody get the fuck to the front of this goddamn car. Shit about to go down, fam. And while all that's happening, your boy Zeus, he gets to the phone. and But there's, like, a guy on it. And he ends up, I think, pulling out a gun, scaring him. Oh, no, he just yells at him, I think. And then there's a cop, though. Little puss cop. Because he's shaking on hard. He's like, get, get, get on the floor, motherfucker. <laughs> and Samuel Jackson's like, look, man, if you're going to shoot me, just shoot me. But I got to answer this motherfucking phone because it's ringing. Like, your boy Simon is calling. And mm -hmm. he finally just picks up. He's like, fuck that cop. He's scared. I'm answering his phone. He's like, yo, I'm here. And your boy's like, and McLean? He's like, yo, he's kind of slow. He'll be here in a minute. He's like, nah, 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 motherfucker. Y'all y'all broke the rules. This is in compliance. Fuck you. <laughs> this is it, yes. And so your boy Sam is like, well, y'all might as well just duck. And he's like, he puts his hand behind his head. At the same time, the bomb is mixing together. John McClane holding that shit. And he just says, fuck it. Throws that bitch off the back of the subway. Explodes. And now shit's going crazy. Because now the subway car is flying off the tracks. The ceiling's coming down. Motherfuckers are getting hurt. Shit crazy, son. I'd rather be hurt than dead. <laughs> Yeah, because even Samuel Jackson even saves that little bitch cop because he's just standing there all like deer in the headlight type looking. He's like, man, if you don't get your ass on the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, all that, PJ. <laughs> Just to yeah. say, cops be bitches. Just to... Some of these cops is bitches too. Mm. Just like them niggas. Nah. <laughs> Just like them niggas. <laughs> Fans pick up the homies now, though. And they're in the back of the clan. The, uh, they're in the back of a van. Info dump. You learn everything here. You find out about the terrorists, and you find out about Simon. What do you find out about Simon, PJ? You find out that Simon is the guy who he killed, brother. He's Hans Gruber's brother, the dude from the original Die Hard that he threw out the motherfucking window. Mm -hmm. Yes. His brother. He deserved to be thrown out that window, though. Yes. Hans Gruber. I remember that guy. <laughs> and while they're in back of the car, the fucking Simon calls him. And they're like, yo, don't tell him you were here. Just act like normal and shit. And he's like, hey, who's in the van with you? I bet it's this nigga. It's like, God damn it. He's <laughs> 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 too smart. He's like, hey, if that's you, say hello. Say hello, Bill. Or whatever the fuck. He's like, hello. Yeah. <laughs> the other homie, he's like, hey, I bet your homie's in there too. He's still chewing on his glasses and shit. As he's chewing on his glasses, and your boy just takes him out of his mouth like, fuck, man. Yeah, he knows us. This guy's good. And I think this is where he tells him, like, yo, I got a bomb in a school, motherfucker. And uh, I want, what did he, he said something exactly. It's another riddle, right? Because it's like, they go to the wrong school at first, but then... Yeah, he he, cause he gives John McClane and Samuel Jackson a little riddle to go fuck with. But he, he tells them to bomb in the school, but he oh, I think he says um, you can't evacuate. If you evacuate the kids out of the schools, I'm gonna blow that bitch up. Because mm -hmm. that's what yeah. he says later. He says we can't evacuate, but he didn't say we can't search. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we gonna search all the schools, McClane and Zeus. Y'all go do that riddle shit. Oh, the tenth president wasn't it? It was like the tenth uh... president or the. Something like that. I don't know. That's after the, 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 That's uh, the after. water jug thing is coming up first. Ah, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because oh. because after the police scramble to start searching all the schools, that's when you get the first time you see Simon because the camera goes up to like the roof of a building and he's looking through with binoculars and he's like, "They bought it. You can begin, motherfuckers." 
<laughs> do what the fuck you do. Yeah, and that's it. All his people's come in, like his squad rolls up in trucks and all kind of. I think, yeah, they're driving dump trucks. And they're heading into the tunnels. And I think, yeah, at, from them, from this point, he's going to the Federal Reserve building. And I think this is where he infiltrates that motherfucker. He's like in disguise and he's there talking to this dude. And while he's talking to him, his man, the dudes, like security dudes are in the back getting fucking hitting the neck with some darts or some shit. You remember this shit, PJ? I can't cry, Chuck. No. You remember Simon going into like the little Federal Reserve Bank and knocking a dude out? He was in disguise, talking with like the fake accent and shit. I remember the trucks rolling out, but I don't remember. No. Well, guess what? What? He infiltrated the Federal Reserve Bank. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. While they're infiltrating, because they're they because they oh they killed um I, we ain't brought him up yet before, but John McClane has a homie. That he talked to because they were talking about playing the lottery. And he's like, yeah, I always play my badge number. <laughs> Remember that, folks? Oh, and yes, 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 yes. Okay. There you go. I see. I was going to get you there eventually. <laughs> but they ain't killing that homie in the elevator, though. Yes. And uh, the big, like, the big dude, the thug terrorist dude, he takes his badge and puts it on to so try and disguise as a cop. Remember this, folks, again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so they're down in the little, they're trying to get to like the, the section in the reserve where all the gold is, but there's like a security dude down there with a shotgun just going ape shit, just mm -hmm. shooting at nothing, wasting all the ammo. And uh, there's a girly, little terrorist girly has like a little drill thing that she gets into the side of the building with, and she sneaks up on him with like this little like scythe looking knife or whatever the fuck it is and cuts him the fuck up to the Slicing. point where yeah, it's like blood shooting out everywhere. And she keeps going to the point where eventually Simon just walks in, grabs her arm, and is like, yo, I think he's dead, bro. All right. Like, you can stop now. <laughs> like, no, but it's fun, though. She got problems. <laughs> it's quite enough, my child. <laughs> and after this, like I said, your man brings in a bunch of, like, little, uh... What the fuck are those things called? What the fuck Drills. are those things called? Nah. My mind is blank. It's so hard today, bro. Bulldozer. Mm -hmm. Fuck. He brings in a bunch of bulldozers and starts like oh he opens up all the doors and is taking gold and he's in there hype. He's like because he says so he's got a like, brick of gold in his hand. He's like Fort Knox, ha! It's for tourists. And he throws. It <laughs> <laughs> you can tell his boy weak as fuck because your boy Simon <laughs> holding one hand and threw that bitch with one hand and then your man catches it with both hands. He's like dragging down on the floor like weak ass boy. Oh mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, shit. Simon looks very old. Like, not, like, super old, but he looks like he's at least in his 40s. He's probably in, like, his, his mid-30s or something. Like, well, because he got, like, them old people, you know, people start getting them veins and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. they start looking old. He looks like that, so it's very weird to see, like, an old person who's also, like, muscular. Oh, look at yeah. that. Sylvester Stallone now. <laughs> or Schwarzenegger <laughs> now. Literally. You ever see that video, PJ, was from last year at the Arnold Festival, where somebody tried to be funny and run up and drop kick Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he didn't move? No. That motherfucker looked like he drop kicked a wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy because he drop kicked Arnold and fell to the ground and then got his ass beat by security. And then your boy Arnold just kind of turned around like somebody like flicked him or something. He just kind of turned around like, what the fuck? Like, was, it was like that? someone nudged him. Like, that's how he like, moved. Like, like somebody tapped him on the shoulder. He turned around like, who? What do you want? Someone <laughs> him and it looked like someone just like nudged him is how far he moved. He didn't even like stumble really or anything. And he just turned around like, what the fuck? It looked like like motherfucker would drop kicked him and then like died in midair. Like, he just went right down, bro. But my thing is like, why? What was the purpose of doing that? Like Because of internet clout. Damn it. Mm. Yeah, you got the clout for sure. I'm going to run up on Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm going to make, gonna make a new school reference, PJ. Okay. They do anything for clout. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I got a new one. Did not, yes. A, I did not expect that one. Okay. Cool thing, but did he get Donkey of the Day? Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's um Cardi B's husband and Cardi B. It's there you go. See, PJ, yes. some new stuff. Okay. I know, I know new music through memes. Ain't that a bitch? I keep him up on the Cardi B shit. <laughs> yeah, sure. of course. Of course. <laughs> you know I do. I'll be playing it in the car all the time. Uh -huh. Earbuds, baby. But. <laughs> Hiya, baby. <laughs> Hiya, baby. Hiya, baby. Don't never come down free base. <laughs> Don't worry, <laughs> PJ. PJ. I'm sorry. Yes. I have to. I, I think I've talked about this before, but I'm going to throw it out here now. My grandmother, uh -huh. rest in peace, fucking uh -huh. loved this movie. This is one of her favorite movies of all time. Yes. But she fucking hated this scene coming up right here. Because she never could figure out how the fuck they fixed, they figured out this water jug puzzle. I figured it out. I did too. And when I explained it to her, she got mad. 
<laughs> uh, did, how did they figure it out? Do you know what I'm talking about, though, PJ? Yes. All right, I don't remember. Fuck, I should have watched it probably because I actually don't remember how. Because it's like they got a what was it? It was a, it's a five gallon jug and like what a three gallon jug I think it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they got to have exactly four gallons on the on the the thing. Yes, the measurements. So they had to empty out the three gallon into the five gallon, and then oh. the five gallon leaves one. So you put that. What the fuck? Uh, I, I actually found a thing. It's a wiki house. Is how to solve the water jug riddle from Die Hard Three. Her thing was she was like, "It's bullshit because you can't be accurate because there's like no no uh, divots on the thing to tell you exactly where the water level is." Or some shit she would say. It always made me laugh. But okay, here you go. It says they had to diffuse a bomb by placing exactly four gallons on a of water on a sensor. The problem is you only have a five gallon jug and a three gallon jug on hand. So here you go, PJ. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna skip this because it's saying simplify shit. Okay, step by step. It says one, simplify the question and your options. Uh, let me see. Two, I'm, I'm, I know there's a bunch. I'm trying to simplify for you. It says two, de- determine where you keep the four gallons of water. Know, know that like all good riddles, you have everything you need for a solution. Realize that is a... Okay, hold on. There, okay, here we go. Here's the actual solution. I'm like, what are y'all talking about? All right, one, fill the five-gallon jug up completely. There will be, of course, five gallons in the five-gallon jug. You must fill all the gallons up to the top. Otherwise, you don't actually know how much you have. Two, use the water from the five-gallon jug to fill the three-gallon jug. You're left with three gallons in the three-gallon jug and two gallons in the five-gallon jug. Three, pour out the three-gallon jug. You're left with nothing in the three-gallon jug and two gallons in the five-gallon jug. Four, transfer the water from the five-gallon jug to the three-gallon jug. Five, fill up the five... uh, five, (laughs) Fuck, fill up the five-gallon jug completely. You now have two gallons in the three-gallon jug and five in the five-gallon jug. This means that there is one gallon of space left in the three-gallon jug. Six, use the water from the five-gallon jug to fill up the... Th- I'm just going to say... Ju- use the water from five jug to fill up the three jug. Mm. Fill up the last gallon of space in the three jug with the water from the five jug. This leaves you with three gallons in the three jug and four gallons in the five jug. <laughs> There's another solution. Fuck it. Okay. One, fill the three jug completely with water. Two... Transfer this water to the five jug. Three, refill the three jug with water. Four, fill the five jug with water from your three jug. Five, pour out the five jug and refill it with your one gallon. Six, fill up the three jug. Seven, transfer the three gallons of water into the five jug and end up with four gallons. So you got two options there, PJ. Or. Uh oh. (laughs) What's up? Could fill up the five gallon. Yeah. Hold on. I had it. I had a, I had a real genius thought. Okay. You can fill up the five gallon, pour out the three into the three gallon. Right. Oh, but you only have two jugs. I was about to say, then just I was empty that, that shit. <laughs> and this last gallon halfway. I don't know. I don't know. Well, there you go. You do know because I just told you. There you go. <laughs> if it was hot, it was weighted, right? Yeah. So could they not have just like filled it up slowly until the weight got to four gallons? Be precise, or the bomb was gonna go off. Ah! Uh, so if I they see. put it on the scanner, it would have blown the fuck up if it was anything other than four gallons. Ah! Uh, but they was dropping a lot of water and shit, so I feel like that wasn't actually accurate. Well, they were at a fountain, so they could just fill it back up. Yeah, I'm from. A- oh, oh well, well, the there. option worked. What did you say, PJ? I said my option worked. Then you fill up the five gallon. All right. You empty out the. Th- you empty out three gallons. That leaves two gallons left. So then you empty out the three gallon uh, water, and all that's left is the two gallons. If you split that in half, mm-hmm. you keep one of the gallons in the five gallon one. Then you fill back up that three gallon one, and just put that shit in there. I think you just explained one of the things I explained, PJ. Oh, I think you did. It sounds um, like it. well. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Well, you got you got there too. That's all that matters. The more you know. Fort Knox. <laughs> it's for twist. <laughs> oh uh, shit! There you go. But this is where PJ, after they defused the bomb, um, <clears throat> damn, a little hiccup there. Um, this is where Simon calls. He's like, "Hey, congratulations! You fixed it. Are you got the bomb right?" He's like, "Your next riddle. What is twenty-one out of forty-two? God, I, I don't get that either. Well, we'll get to it because they don't either. So. Yeah. Oh, and there's two tickets to Yankee Stadium, too. I forgot. 
they're, I think they're walking up the street or some kids go by or they bump into him. And uh, the kid's like, what does he say? He's like, the whole city's going crazy. You can still city hall. And then your boy, just John McClane gets the ultimate like Jimmy Neutron brain. <laughs> city hall. This wasn't about any of this. This was about him and his vendetta. Something, something. Not, yeah. It's not about revenge. It's about a fucking heist. Ah, not about revenge. It's about, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Well, because he realizes that where is the one area where there's no fucking schools? Wall mm. Street. Genius. And that bomb went off there, too. So that's where everybody's fucking panicking in Wall Street, too. It's like, no, all right, you go you go to Yankee Stadium, Zeus. I got, I'm going to go you know, check on a lead I got. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, I think, yeah, they show Zeus go to Yankee Stadium, and there's like a little, one of the little pinball old school games is right there, and he picks it up and looks at the back, and it just says, game over. And he's looking around like, what yes. the fuck? And there's some snipers like about to blast his ass. <laughs> and the yes. one guy keeps asking like, yo, we good? Do I shoot? And he's like, no, because the other guy's not here. And uh, his, your boy Zeus starts to run off. And he's like, nigga, what the fuck you want me? Do I shoot? <laughs> and the boy's like, no, <laughs> motherfucker, we're just following shit. That has to be a stressful job, being a sniper and having to wait to receive orders to kill somebody. Like, if right. you have them lined up in your scope, you want to just pull the trigger. But no, niggas need orders. It's so stressful to not be able to kill people. Ha. You know? Spoken like the true girlfriend of my best friend. That is... <laughs> Beyonce, and I was being sarcastic. Ooh, even better. Beyonce. Correction, motherfucker. Yeah. Get my title right, nigga. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No disrespect, nah. queen. No disrespect. None now, taken, none taken. To, to not come off as a complete maniac, she was being sarcastic. And I was like, no, it can be sometimes. <laughs> I had that urge many times. And that's what PJ was probably referring to. <laughs> I know. Like, I, I've told y'all before, like, I've had, like, those natural born killers, like, flashes happen where I'm like, I could fucking end you right now. And not give a fuck. But I'm not going to do that. You see how loving and kind he is? <laughs> I know. I'm so loving because I won't kill you. Put that That's, on a t-shirt. <laughs> right. That's like a serial killer's logic. It's Don't I love you? <laughs> I love you so I can't kill you. I can't <laughs> you tell I love you, bitch. I ain't killed you yet. <laughs> like, you, do you think I don't care about you, motherfucker? Ain't you breathing? <laughs> Have I let you live thus long? I've literally had one of my parents tell me that. I believe it. Let you guess which one. No, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm don't even have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> PJ. Yeah. John McClane is at the Federal Reserve. You remember what happens? No, I, I know he sees uh, old boy's number when he gets there. When he like walks by, he sees like the badge number of one of his, of yes. the guy that plays his number. Oh, shit. I fucked up. Uh-oh. Your boy didn't go to Yankee Stadium first. Um, before he went to Yankee Stadium, your boy, um, what was the name? Fuck, Simon spared him, actually, because um, that bomb that they defused, Samuel Jackson's like, yo, we should move that. A kid could find that shit. And John McClane's like, yeah, you're right. So get the fucking bomb since you're that worried about it, basically. Mm -hmm. And he goes to take the bomb to some cops, but those cops are undercover Simon dudes. And and um, because they call and they're like, "Yo, uh, McLean is here. What the fuck you want me to do?" And uh, since it's just Zeus, he's like, "Fuck it, let him go." Cause your boy ready, like you said, ready to chop. He's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna need an answer like right now." Mm. He's like, "Fuck it, let him go." And he's like, "Understood." Hey, what's up, homie? How you doing? Hey, it's a bomb. Let me give me that shit. His whole accent went away and everything. His boy was gonna leave it there, and then he, they, his your man said the same thing. He's like, "Oh, I'm not riding with that bomb." He's like, "Yo, some kid could pick that up. Put it in the back of the car, motherfucker." I think that was a subtle hint about a later event in this movie. That they like, they keep being like, oh, you know, a kid could get hurt by that bomb. Think about that. Come on, PJ. I'm, I'm not, I'm not finding it. I'm not following. We'll get to it then. We get to it then. I won't spoil it for you just yet. Just remind me when we start talking about the school, PJ. Hint, hint. Still. Oh. oh there we go. Okay. Oh. See what I'm saying now? The fake. Fuck it, man. It's an old movie. We'll spoil it right now. There's not actually a bomb in the school. That's yeah. It was, it was a fake. Yeah. Wasn't it like yeah. syrup or something? It was pancake syrup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. This could be a subtle hint, PJ, that they're not actually going to fuck no kids up because they didn't even want to leave a bomb in a park. To oh, hurt. That's what I was getting at. Shit. See, even terrorists have morals. <laughs> yeah, some of them. Wow. Didn't get that one. There you go. See, yeah. It's, just got, it's the message hidden. But after that, yeah, like we were saying, though, your boy McLean it goes to the Federal Reserve and they're going, they're getting ready to fuck him up. He's in the elevator with a bunch of them, and he notices that the big dude has on his homie's badge number. Because, like I said, remember that. Mm -hmm. He starts, and he like, goes into, all right, I'm about to fuck them up, Mo. He's like, hey, any of y'all get the number last night? 
Like and everybody's like, nah, nah, nah. Because they're oh, they're also dropping other little hints too if you listen to them. Because one guy, because you know the saying, you know, it's raining cats and dogs outside. And the guy's like, yeah, it's raining dogs and cats outside. And then um, they take goes to take him to the elevator, but he doesn't call it the elevator. He calls it the lift. So he's there's subtle hints that there's something's wrong here if you're paying attention. Mm-hmm. I still don't follow. Because like in like over yeah, in Europe, yeah. they call it the lift. Yeah, they don't and, say elevator. Yeah. So like you know. That oh. It's the lift. You're not oh, American. Oh, switching back to the... Oh, okay. Yeah, he's co- they're covering up... They're doing American, like, fake accents, but they're still talking like they're, like, European and shit. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got talking, you. Yeah, he's trying to say do- raining cats and dogs. He's like, it's raining uh, dogs and cats. Oh, you peeped a lot of subtlety, sir. PJ, nigga, <laughs> what did I tell you earlier? I I don't... I didn't need to watch this movie for the podcast. Wow. I've seen it so many times. It's one of my grandma's favorite movies and one of my favorite movies. <laughs> So I watched it a lot. Step on the subtleness. Yeah, I, I played the video game a lot. <laughs> There's but, a third one video game or just the first one? On PS1, there was a game that came out called Die Hard Trilogy, which had a game for each movie. Oh, okay. The first game was kind of like running around just saving the hostages and shooting people, like top-down perspective, I think of it was. Mm-hmm. The second game was like a, you know, like the arcade, like the little light gun games where you just point at the screen and shoot and shit. It was mm-hmm. like that. And the third game, you just drove around and like disarmed bombs in the, in the city. Oh. Third game, though, me and my brother always laugh because if you ran over like a civilian in the street, like the window would get all bloody and he would turn on the wipers and wipe the blood off the front <laughs> shit. <laughs> so, guess what we did a lot? We ran over civilians. <laughs> and laugh like, ah. Y'all would have done that regardless. Probably. GTA, motherfucker. Uh, mm-hmm. That's a movie we'll see one day. I got to get PJ to watch the Resident Evil movies one day. My God. Yeah, I'm still not hip. I love the video games, the movies, not so much. Hmm. The second one. I fucking love the second movie though, because it's horrible. But it's that good horrible that I like though. Is it is that a controversial opinion? It probably actually, because people hate that fucking movie. <laughs> well, it's definitely gonna be one where my score is a lot higher than everybody else's. I'm sure. Hmm. It's the the second movie is basically the third Resident Evil game made into a movie, and that's significant because the third Resident Evil just got remade on PS4, and I just played through it, and I love that shit. I said I should have probably watched that movie when that came out. I might have got us some more listeners, but fuck it. I didn't think of that shit at the time. Fuck it. But back to this movie, though. Where were we at, man? Oh, your boy McClane, was, he murked them dudes in the elevator. He murked them in the lift, you mean. Oh, yeah, there you go. He murked him in the lift. And that's when he, he ah. finds his homie dead in there. Oh, yeah, because um, Zeus catches up with him because he was about to smoke his ass. And your boy Zeus was like, no, no, no. Hold on, motherfucker. No, it's me, it's me, man. Mm-hmm. So they end up jacking the car again. And um, I guess to further cause mass hysteria. Oh, because yeah, because the police have been like, "Yo, we're not gonna tell. We're gonna we're gonna check the schools, but we're not gonna let the kids know what's going on. We don't want them to panic." But the principals and everything know, because you can see teachers are whispering to each other, and they had that look like, "Oh shit, there could be a bomb in this school." That's when I leave work. I'm not. Yeah, as a future teacher, what you gonna do? You gonna stay and help the children, or you gonna bang out? Oh my god. Oh, think wisely. Somebody's parents might be listening to this. No, I'm aware. That's the thing, though. Like I love my kids i think that like in those in that moment like i don't know if it's estrogen thing or nurturing trait thing or not but like in that moment like your first thought isn't about yourself it's about the children like you don't even think about it like you must it's just, save the children it just happens because you just have like this overall that's a child i need to protect them thing mm-hmm. now Fuck sitting here shit. talking about it <laughs> Hashtag, no. sitting here talking about it like my mind is strictly like i want to save myself fuck them kids but no like i, I remember i'm so like i wish Throw i could kids into the fire <laughs> at times i wish i could be <laughs> i wish i could be selfish but i would probably be protective and Move, little nigga. Because, like, I've had situations like that before where it was, like, not necessarily life or death, but, like, get really fucked up or save someone else. And it was, like, and I've chosen multiple times to get fucked up to save other people. Mm Mm-hmm. What you gonna do, Mr. PJ, teacher? What are you doing? Uh, you know, I gotta stick around for the kids. I can't just leave them. They have to help. kids. (laughs) But not in that way, though, you nasty motherfucker. (laughs) Yeah. Shame on y'all. Shame on you, nigga. My mind's telling me no. No, no, PJ, no. <laughs> See what I did there? See how? <laughs> no. I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you it's going to be controversial when I said it, but now not as much. I've never been a big R. Kelly fan from Jump, so when everybody's like, well, I'm not listening to his music no more, I'm like, I got a head start. I wasn't doing it anyway, bro. Right. I don't know why it's never going to hip to him, and now it's like, yeah, now I'm not. I don't really don't care now. Is he a pedophile? Mm. 
What the fuck? They got, they stole the car. Oh, that's what I was getting at, though, about the kids, my bad. To cause panic, your boy Simon calls a radio station and is like, yo, I heard it's a bomb in the school, son. And the police ain't telling nobody. And it's going to blow up in like an hour or some shit. Like, he just gets everybody panicked because it just shows like the 911 hotline just going ape shit. And now the police are pissed off because now they're like, all right, we got to get these fucking. Because now everybody panicking. We got to do something about this. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough manpower to check every motherfucking school. So we need to figure this shit out. What is we going to do? But this is where your boy goes to Yankee Stadium. And John McClane goes off. I think they stole the truck. Oh, 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 yes. That's what happened here. Now I remember. Because they stole a car. And then local, they had the car phone and all that shit in there. But then they stole another car. And your boy was mad because he accidentally left a gold brick in there that he stole from the reserve. Because <laughs> I think he's like, because Samuel Jackson's like, yo, that guy looked pissed. And McClane's like, yo, he'll be happy when he looks in the back seat. And then your boy Sam was like, fuck, that was my gold bar. <laughs> I'm sorry, that shit was hilarious because I'm not going to lie. That would have been me. <laughs> John McClane, he he jacks one of them dump trucks because he because they oh, I think at this point they realize like yo they're using the dump trucks to transfer the gold and shit, mm -hmm. and he goes to take one but it's not one of the bad guys it's a, it's a homie named Jerry and he takes him to like the aqueduct tunnel where all the trucks are going and while he's in there your boy just dropping mad knowledge on random shit to him your boy's like yo hang back I'm gonna go up here and holler at these dudes and he goes and smoke the motherfuckers through the side of the car through the car door because your boy Jerry comes up and he's like yo are they dead and your boy's like yeah yeah they dead bro. So he tells, he tells Jerry, we're like, yo, you get the fuck out of here. I'm going to jack their truck and I'm going to keep going forward. And as so he finds out, too, he's checking their wallets. And they all got like, a, I forget how many it is, but they got like a big stack of quarters and shit that you find out later they're using to make phone calls or pay phones and shit. Remember those? <laughs> I do. Yes. They still have them at uh, Columbus State. Oh, and then um, he asks dude, he tells dude, like, yo, go get a hold of the police chief, whatever the fuck his name is, and ask him, you know, what is 21 out of 42 or who the 21st president is or whatever the fuck. And your boy just says, oh, Chester A. Arthur. And John there you go. John McClane's like, what? He's like, yo, Chester A. Arthur. He's like, and he starts dropping a bunch of little facts on him. And he's like, hey, did you know this and that? And your boy's just like, nah, I didn't know. Thanks, homie. And drives off. Remember what happened next, PJ? No. Well, since he told, oh, well, hold on. Did they get the info to him now or later? I'm trying to remember exactly what happened. Let me look at my notes. Now I got to look down at the notes for me. Okay, yeah, because I skipped ahead. So, yeah, he got he went to Yankee Stadium. The bad guys are following him. Yes! They know John McClane is, Simon and them are in the tunnel. And they know John McClane is following them. Because there's, there's a Simon's little henchman dude keeps telling him, like, yo, just fucking kill him. Why are you fucking with him? Fucking kill him. And that would have been me. Like, yo, just fucking kill him. Rule number one. Shoot that nigga first. Nah. <laughs> Rule number two. Don't forget to smoke that motherfucker, bro. Like, <laughs> Make it so simple. When it ain't about money, you smoke that motherfucker. But nah, it is about money, though. That's the thing, though. That's why he doesn't kill him, because of rule number one, PJ. He worried about them gold bricks. He worried about that paper. Ah, uh, yes. So he actually yeah. is following the rule, PJ. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, well, well, well. But I, but I guess he tired of your boy uh, nagging him and shit. So he's like, yo, come here. We're going to drown him. And your boy's mm -hmm. like, what? He's like, motherfucker, we're going to drown him. And so I guess they set a bomb um, up at the aqueduct or whatever. Because John McClane is out the truck right now. He's trying to put like a little beam across the thing so his car can drive through. And you start to hear like a like a flowing water sounds and shit. And your boy looks forward a little bit. And you just see a big ass stream of fucking water coming up that tunnel. And your man legit, I think for like one of the first times in the movie, he looks scared as fuck. <laughs> Yeah. Tell him about it, PJ. That's all I remember. <laughs> you remember how he got out the I tunnel? I just remember that. Like, oh, yeah, now who's a hard ass? Yeah, because he gets to the truck and he just hits reverse and the water's, like, getting dangerously close to him. So he has to get yeah. out and get on top of the truck and there's, like, a little uh, opening at the ceiling that he has to grab onto. And the water done filled up the fucking pipeline so much that it shoots him out like a little spout and shit. And you Samuel Jackson just happens to be driving around that shit and sees your boy just get shot the fuck out and fly up into the air. He goes to go pick him up and he's asking him, like, yo, what happened? And while we're out talking, you see, bah, 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 bah. your boy starts shooting at him and shit. Bad aim like a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. He shoots like one of those guys in the Star Wars. Oh, the Stormtroopers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stormtrooper aim. Wait. What's up? Are we at the end? Pretty much. We getting through this movie, PJ. <laughs> That's the thing. It's, it's action movie, so we ain't got a lot. Yeah. It's a plot plot. <laughs> mm, okay but yeah 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 yeah. they get in the car it's like a little car chase but then i i think what the fuck does he cut does he cut like the emergency brake line because mm -hmm. he does something he, like tell zeus like yo cut this line right here and when he does it it lets the car do a more like a motherfucking 360 and while he's doing the 360 and that shit he just starts chopping up the motherfuckers chasing him in the car and that's yeah. how they get rid of him and i think at this point too he done told 
uh, Zeus about like Chester A. Arthur the school and shit, and he find out that's the same school where his two nephews are at right now. Yes. And so they're preparing all the kids for evacuations. You know, John, be calm. You know, you know the cops are like, "Hey, when I count to this number, we're all going run out the building." Okay, you know that type of shit. But then, of course, his kids, being the shit kids that they are, have left the auditorium and went up to a classroom. They're playing cards for some fucking reason. They probably think it's another fucking that's drill. Probably true. We did used to that's do shit a, like that. I can't. I was about to say that's the. I could see that shit happening in Afrocentric. Yeah, fuck this shit. Oh, they'll be back. But they got fucked though because the janitor, I guess, was going around checking all the rooms, making sure they were empty, and locking the doors, and so they got locked into the room. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I was. I was about to skip ahead a little bit. See, that's what notes are for, homie. They find uh, the boat that all the dump trucks are on, but they're high up on a bridge. And so they're like, yo, how the fuck are we going to get down there? And Samuel Jackson crazy ass is like, yo, let's jump. And your boy's like, man, what the fuck? You talking about jumping down there? And there's a, the truck. There's a truck that the, I think the truck they had had like a zip line or tow line on the front of it. And they start using that to kind of zip line to the boat. But then it's too much weight for that fucking truck. And it ends up falling off the bridge. And they swing down onto the boat. And did you notice, PJ, that the guard that was down there, when the when the zip line hit him, that bitch cut him in half. Did you see that shit? Oh, shit. No. Yeah, the little guard that was trying to shoot him as they were falling down, the zip line came over and cut that motherfucker in half. You, it's like a real quick. Like, if you watch, if you see it, it's wow. like quick as fuck. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, oh, that's like a real time thing. Yeah. That's a, that's a real life shot. Okay. It, it looked realistic because it just happened like, hey, you're dead. <laughs> okay. There's no slow mo or nothing. It's just how you die. Because he died, he was shooting a gun. So when he was cutting half of the upper part of his body, it was going like, Brrr, like still shooting a gun uh, and shit. That's how quick it was. Ah. Uh, While all this is going on, though, you realize that there is treachery afoot because, uh, I think. Hold on. They kill him now. Fuck it. We'll just say it now. But because um, the, there's a the big Simon's what's his name? Oh, his name is like Targo. Simon's little body, big bodyguard dude, Targo. He's um chilling in the boat, and one of the little lackey dudes comes up to him. He's like, "Yo, I gotta show you something, B." He's like, "Yo, nah. Later on, we'll talk about it later." He's like, "No, right now, motherfucker." And he shows him like a piece of scrap metal, and so you find out. You know, they don't show. I think they cut away, but basically, the, the all the spots that they thought had gold in them all have scrap metal in them. Mm-hmm. So your boy is like you Simon doing some you know some back double, tur- crossing. double crossing. There you go. I was about to say back crossing. God damn it, double <laughs> crossing. But we'll find out more about that later on. Because uh, John is and, uh, John McClane and Zeus split up. But he gives Zeus a chopper and he's teaching him how to use it. And I have problems with this. And I might save it for later. I have a pro- big problem with this scene right here. But we'll get to Which it when we get is. to it. Oh, we'll talk about because okay. remember, just remember that he shows him how to use the gun. Remember that, PJ. Uh huh. Like you you re, you pull that back, you load it, and you aim and shoot. And he tells him he's like, "Yo, if you see something, don't be no hero. You come and get me." And your man already uh-huh. doing like the splinter cell out, cr- like crouch run. Like he been, he already like he knew what he was doing. Yeah. Back at the school, everybody's evacuating. But then one the little woman cop is like, "Oh my god!" Because there's a bunch of kids in the window looking down, like, "Yo, what the fuck happening?" So now they're like, "Fuck, we gotta go back in there and save them goddamn kids." And uh, cause the bomb does, they were telling the bomb dude like, hey, we got all the kids out, you can leave. But then he hears on the intercom that yo, there's kids still in the building. So now it's like, well, I got to be the hero now. Now I got to defuse this goddamn bomb, mm-hmm. and I got no time to do it. So the woman cop and other cop are running through there. They get the kids, and then I, and they're trying to find a way out in time. But they end up going to the roof, but the other building is too far a jump from the fucking jump across. So they just basically go hide in the corner and wait to get blown the fuck up. Because we ain't got nothing else to do. You fucking kids and got all of us kid now, you bastards. So the dude, he, he said, he's like, no guts, no glory, motherfucker. And he cuts the wire. And then he's, all the chemicals start spraying out into his face. But it's not chemical. What is it, PJ? Syrup. It's pancake syrup. And back well, up, it was just like, not like pancake syrup, but like. Well, that's what the dude says when he, when he hits him in the face. He's like, pancake syrup? Oh. That's why I said, that's why I put, I would have just said syrup. But I said pancake syrup because that's the line in the movie. Hmm. Hey. Right. But how do you get it to different colors? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe mixed it with water. He laced it with some food coloring. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> you think it too much. But um, now back on the boat, though, Samuel Jackson, he, uh, well, I'll just say this first. John McClane fucks, he, man, he fucks some dude up with a door. You remember that shit, PJ? No. You hear dude? your sirens? Yeah, I do. Fuck it. They, they, you're in now. Shit, we ain't got him this time. I know, right? Every episode. Damn right. But um, now nah, there's a dude. And he's like coming through the door, and John McClane like hits him with the door, and he just goes like, bah, bah, bah. He just hits him with that mm-hmm. bitch about eight times until he's like, blood is flying out and shit. And that is how you properly use <laughs> Yeah, he was what? mad. Yeah. He's like, I'm so sick of this shit. Yeah. And then he ends up getting into a fight with the dude Targo inside that loading bay area, and they're going back and forth, and eventually he fucking beats him after getting his ass severely whooped, because now your boy got blood all over him. Like, your man look dirty as fuck now. 
Because mm-hmm. he didn't got he got brains on him, he got his own blood on him, he got like dirt and shit on him. It's all bad. Look like he didn't kill the man. Blood before. coming out his nose and shit. While that's happening, Samuel Jackson done found Simon, and he rolls up on him with the chopper. But your boy Simon is like he he calm as fuck. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, you gotta do what you gotta do. Go ahead and shoot me, motherfucker. And Samuel Jackson goes to shoot him, but it clicks because the fucking safety is on. <laughs> now PJ, the problem. Yeah. John yeah. McClane knows this shit, but didn't realize the fucking safety was on, though. Your boy Simon saw that shit from across the room. <laughs> but John McClane didn't see that shit right. That's always bothered me in this movie, but it's a plot. It might have been one of those, like, slips. Like, he knew what he was doing, but he ain't, he didn't expect. I guess in the moment, you're not thinking that much. But if you, yeah. But he looked at the gun to show him how to reload it and shit, PJ. Maybe he just forgot uh, to tell him to take the safety off. Yeah. Cause that's it, it was, what'd you say? It was just a slip. It was like a, oh, shit. I guess so. that was always an issue because I'm like, you're a gunman. You should know this shit. <laughs> but like I said, this is your train. Exactly. Like some people know how to do things but aren't good teachers. I guess so. It's still weird to me. But like I said, your boy is all calm. He's, he's trying to shoot him and he's like, click, click, click. And your boy is like eating the egg. He just eats his egg and he's like, hey, uh, he grabs the gun. He's like, yo, you forgot to take safety catch off. Takes it off and shoots him in the kneecap. He's like, now it works. <laughs> and he's like, so where's McClane at? But like I said, a while after that happens, that's when your boy gets in the fight and everything. Basically, once the bomb in the school gets found out to be pancake syrup and that it was all a distraction, your boy John McClane figures it all out. Because as at the time, he's trying to call... He's on the phone with the co- uh, Coast Guard. And while he's on the phone with him, Simon raises up the real bomb like out of the water or out the side of the boat or some shit. And your boy just kind of like kneels down and is just like, fuck, man, he played us. Mm-hmm, because he was about to blow the motherfuckers up. Simon comes over to him. He's like, it's game over, honey. He's like, oh, not quite over yet. And he's like, because he said he gets the phone. He's like, hello, hello. And he's like, they put you on hold. And then uh, John McClane says something. And your boy just laughs. He's like, God, I love this country. And at first, they're trying to figure out, like, maybe he's trying to blow up the gold as some type of political statement or something. Well, that's the original anything. plan. So the Targo dude and the little terrorist with him, their plan is to blow up the gold as, like like I said, some kind of statement. But your boy is like, no. I'm going to blow that. up the gold. Exactly. Rule yeah. number one. Get the money first. Exactly. And then rule number two. Don't forget to get the money. We ain't blowing up no gold out here, son. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not how this works. Because it was like they were going to like irradiate it or some shit too, so it like could never be used or something, something like that. Because they weren't just going to like blow it up, like because then you probably just melt it, and put it back there. They're going to like irradiate it or some shit, I think, something like that. But um, but yeah, they get caught. And your boys laughing at the Coast Guard putting them on hold and shit. I think when they come back on the line, your boy has a tape recorder and he plays a message to the Coast Guard and saying basically all their little like the shit you were saying, like them about blowing up the gold, all the terrorist shit, there, fake terrorist shit, I should say, quotes terrorist shit. But, yep, it's the end of the game now. So, John McClane and Zeus are tied to the bomb. And they're at saying, like, yo, there ain't no riddle. He's like, no, nope, no riddles. You're just going to fucking die. Seems like some shit you would do. Exactly. Mm. Your boy, as Simon's leaving, your boy's like, hey, dickhead, or something like that. And, he's, and your boy gets a look like he's going to fuck him up. And then John McClane's like, yo, you got any aspirin? I got a really bad headache. And I forgot to mention, throughout the whole movie, uh, Simon suffers from migraines. So, he always has aspirin with him. And so, he laughs. He's like, it's your lucky day, motherfucker, and throws him the aspirin bottle. Remember that aspirin bottle because that actually will play into the ending. Simon goes back up to his boat to go hang out with the little female terrorist. And Targo is there all beat up. And he's like, he's telling the girl, like, yo, he lied to us. That shit's nothing but scrap metal. He's going to keep the gold. And she pulls the gun out on Simon. And they look at each other. But then she turns that bitch to Targo and smokes his ass. So it's like she's allegiance to the dick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not the cause. Mm-hmm. Also, it's the penis. There you go. But yeah, they're trying to pick a lock because um i guess from the zip wire that they used to get down john mcclain has like a piece of wire inside of his arm that he he uses his teeth to pick it out of his arm and he's trying to have zeus pick it the lock but then um he frees mcclain but then he drops the fucking piece of metal and so he's telling mcclain like yo we ain't got no time because the bomb is starting to mix at this point so shit's about to blow the fuck up and he's telling mcclain to go but mcclain's like motherfucker look, you done made it through this whole movie bro i'm not about to let you die at the end god damn this movie's almost over <laughs> yeah don't let the black man die. A black man hasn't died so far. Exactly. So he gets a crowbar. He mixes, like, like how dude did with the chair in the beginning. Ha, foreshadowing. He mixes a little bit of it on the end, puts it on the handcuffs, and blows his arm out of it. Probably singeing the fuck out of his arm, but at least he didn't get blown the fuck up, I guess, huh? They mm. jump off the boat right as an explosion happens. So you see, get the shot of them under the water with all the blowing up effects over top of them. They get found by the cops. They're like, basically, like, yo, we lost. Simon won. He beat us. He got the gold. He got away. 
we fucked. Uh, the whole movie, you know, Zeus and John McClane been talking about his wife and shit. So Zeus is like, yo, fuck it, man, you ain't lose. Go holler at your wife. Here's a quarter. Go call your wife and, you know, make up with her and shit. So your boy's at the pay mm-hmm. phone calling his wifey with the aspirin bottle. He sets the aspirin bottle down. But then at the bottom, PJ, I forget what exactly it says, but it says Something some Canada. Yeah, some Canadian shit. Shout out to Brendan and Nathan. He's hanging out with What Were They Thinking podcast. Mm-hmm. John McClane is like, oh shit, I know where they're going. We got to go to the What Were They Thinking podcast studio right now. Yes, immediately. Back over there, I guess in Canada, Simon and his crew are in there celebrating. You know, they popping bottles and all this shit. Basically like, yo, we could thank the Americans and all their stupidity. Ah, and all that type of shit. But then there's one dude that he throws a bottle. He's like, yo, to fallen comrades. And everybody get quiet. Your boy Simon, you wonder if he gonna smoke this motherfucker or not. But he just smiles. He's like, yeah, fuck it. To fallen comrades, whatever, nigga. But after he's <laughs> drinking his bottle, he starts, he see that ass going up to his office. And he's like, oh, let's go pop off something else. Hey. Excuse me. So he gets up yeah. in there, and at first, they, they act like, I guess she like it rough, because they start fighting a little bit, and he slams her down on the desk, rips her shirt off his shit, and rides, he sticks his dick up in that pussy. Flashlights, or sorry, searchlights, hit the window. Helicopters have been deployed. Natural born killer oh. reference for that ass. And yes. yeah, and girly mad, because she like, I've been waiting all movie to get this goddamn dick. It's inside me right now, and I can't fuck. Damn it. Coitus interruptus. <laughs> Disappointment. I am very disappointed. <laughs> Fifth Element reference. All the references for that ass today. But yeah, she she grabs Simon's pistol and starts shooting at the helicopter. And Samuel Jackson's laughing. He's like, yo, I think she pissed at you, McClane. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, cops are surrounding the hotel. And um, the police chopper is actually getting shot down because Simon got this big ass machine. Oh, he's actually in his own helicopter now, too, at some point. And he shoots down the helicopter because the boy uh, Samuel Jackson's back there, like, yo, yo, it's got smoking shit. He's going crazy back there. John McClane gets down on the ground level. He got a revolver with, I think, like three bullets in it or something. Or like, was it one? No, I think it's one bullet left in that bitch. Or was it? No, it was like two. It was a li- He has no ammo. He has limited clip. There you go. So he's looking at what he's going to do because Simon got the gun pointed right at his ass. But then he sees the little sign, the little neon sign has like a little power cord next to it. So he shoots the fucking cord. And as he shoots it, he's like, say hello to your brother. Shoots the cord. That motherfucker hits the helicopter, blows it the fuck up. Oh, no, sorry. It hits the helicopter. They try to run from it. They fucking run up against a pole and their blades start chopping up against it. They get blown the fuck up. Cut to John McClane walking away, looking back, laughing and shit. Oh, sorry, before he does that, he's on the ground, like, from the explosion. He looks at me and he says, what, PJ? Come on, PJ. His catchphrase, no. He's, he's, yippee Kaye, motherfucker. Ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> then that's when he's, he's walking back to Samuel Jackson, laughing at all the fucking bodies he just murdered. And that's when he's realized, he's like, he told oh, Samuel Jackson, oh, shit, I left wifey on hold. He's like, call her back. He's like, I don't know. It's like, my wife can be a stubborn woman. She, he's like, ha, ha, she got to be to be married to you. Ha, 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 mm-hmm. ha, ha, ha. In credits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and PJ, yes, that was Die Hard with a Vengeance. Are we gonna talk about the? Yes, we are. Okay, jumping ahead of the gang, girl. All right, I'm just checking. Slow down, slow down. You gotta listen to more brand newbie and slow down. Oh, slow down. Yeah, see, PJ got that reference. Hey. PJ, did you know that this was not the original ending for this movie? No, there's an alternate ending to this movie. You wanna hear about it? Yeah. yeah. In the original ending of the movie, Simon won and got away back to whatever the fuck that country in Europe he went to. He won. There, oh. there was no hotel shootout, none of that shit. It basically went from John McClane, I guess, on the phone with his wife or going to do whatever after they got picked up and then it went to this. So your boy Simon's in this big ass mansion living lavish with maids and everybody. He reading like the fucking New York Times just chilling. Mm-hmm. Rich nigga shit. Mm-hmm. He gets a visit though and you find out it's John McClane found out where he stay at. And he's coming to come holler at him. But Simon don't give a fuck because he's like, you can't extradite me. You can't arrest me. I got away. Fuck you. Come on. Come here so I can rub all the salt in the wounds, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and you find out. John McClane's talking to me. You find out because of all the shit that happened, he got fired from the LAP or NYPD. So he's basically unemployed probably at this time. Mm-hmm. And um, the reason he got fired is because they thought that he helped the terrorists get away with their plot because of all the shit that was going on. So they basically blamed him for them getting away with the gold. Mm. Um, and you also find out that girly that Simon was fucking at the end of the movie, he killed her too. Mm-hmm. So he ain't had to split nothing with her. Loyal to no one. <laughs> and he Is this shown? It's, a, it's on the DVD. 
Ah, uh, but yeah, it's an actual scene that you can watch. Yep. But um, he killed the girl, and you find out he did still find him because of the aspirin bottle, but it's just not in the same way as the end of the regular movie. And so he tells him, he's like, "Hey, I got a present for you." And your boy's like, "Oh, what's that?" He pulls out a motherfucking mini rocket launcher. He's like, "I gotta play a game for you. I got, I got a game." Uh, McLean says, mm-hmm. and so they go back and forth, and he's asking him a bunch of questions and shit. But every time he answers a question right, he has to spin the fucking uh the oh. This is an important thing, too. He took the sight off of the missile launcher, so you don't know which way the missile launcher is pointing, PJ. Uh, it's basically a game of Russian roulette with a fucking missile launcher. So, Well, that's dope. Yeah, it's, I, I, loved, I like this ending way better. I wish they had used this one, but I guess it's too downbeat of an ending, I guess. You know how people are with their happy endings and shit. <laughs> but um, they're, they're, he's answering the questions, and they're spinning it around. I forget what question it is that he asked him, but he, Simon eventually gets the question wrong. And McClane's like, oh, you got it wrong. You got to pull that trigger now or push that button on the thing. And Simon is scared because, like I said, he doesn't know which way the missile is going to come from. And he shoots the button. And, of course, it blows Simon the fuck up. He gets super murdered. Mm-hmm. Like, he left smoking well, actually, in the he chair. actually, he flips it around and then he shoots Oh, he flips it one last time. That's right. Yeah, before he hits the button, he can flip it one last time. And he actually flips it again. So if he hadn't flipped it, he wouldn't have died. He would actually kill McClane. But he had to get that last flip in, though. Mm-hmm. Right. And John McClain says the like the right answer to the question and he smiles and gets up and walks out and that would have been the original end. Wow. I think I would have liked that. Yeah, I, I, I always liked it better. I wish that they had put that in there, man. But like I said, the test audiences wanted the happy ending and shit, so fuck off. Uh-huh. <laughs> but with that, PJ, that is Die Hard with a Vengeance, Die Hard 3. Thank you to Nicole for the Patreon pick. But it's time to play them promos and them advertisements, P. Mm-hmm. So we'll be right back. Hi, guys. We interrupt your favorite podcast to interrupt you with an ad for your new favorite podcast. Wait, wait. Isn't this playing on somebody else's show? Exactly. So then how are we? Inter- I thought we were their new favorite podcast. Well, we're going to become their new favorite podcast after they hear this advertisement for our show. What's our show called, Justine? Superiority Complex. Yeah. Where can they find us, Patrick? Uh, Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, exactly. You can go to at Soup Complex on Twitter, S-O-U-P Complex, and you can go to Facebook.com. Slash soup complex, but our main page is on Podbean, and you can find us there at www.superioritycomplex.podbean.com. New episodes are out every Thursday. Justine, yes. what do we talk about on the superiority complex? Nerdy stuff. Perfect. Don't get all sensual with your voice. Yeah, did you hear that? I heard it. That's a little inappropriate. If you want to hear a little more of that, tune in to the superiority complex. One more time, Justine. What do we talk about? Nerdy stuff. Nah, wasn't no. the same. You tried. PJ. Yes. Uh, I would have to give this. It was a lot of action. I would say it's not memorable action. Like it's not something that's like, for me, like you know, as it it was edge of my seat, but it wasn't memorable. Okay. That's basically so, what Rod Smetlow's review was kind of saying. Ah, okay. I mean, I, eh, I give it a seven. Oh, I didn't think it'd be that low. Okay. Yeah, hey, strong seven. I, I want to give it an eight, but it's a, eh, I can't fully commit to it. Hey, it's all good, homie. What about you, Spirit? What you think? Um, So, people who listen should know that I love Samuel L. Jackson. And out of all the Die Hard movies, this one is my favorite. Like, I don't mind watching this one. First one, eh. I'm going to have to say an eight. So, I take it you like the original Die Hard better, PJ. Yes. The definitely. original Die Hard got two 10 pluses from us. Definitely. Well, guess what, PJ? This one gets a 10 plus. You goddamn right, it gets a 10 plus. I fucking love this movie, man. <laughs> like I said, I didn't need to watch it. I fucking, I know this movie. I don't, I just, I just talk. That's all I need to do, talk. I've always liked this movie. I remember the first time I watched this movie, I called it, um, it was like on HBO or Cinemax or something. Back when I was at my grandma's house all the time, I used to record everything on VHS tapes. And I would, like, record um, all the types of movies off of HBO. Like, I had a tape that had, like, New Jack City and A Transporter and Die Hard with a Vengeance and other, some other show in there. Like, eight hours of movies on one tape. I used to love that shit back in the day. And that was the first time I really watched it was uh, watching it and recording it on Cinemax. And ever since then, my fuck, I was on. I love this movie, man. And the reason why we had to do that, record things on VHS, because we ain't have no damn DVR back then. Yeah, there was no DVR. It didn't even exist. Mm-hmm. DV, that v, the recording on tape was the DVR. Because mm-hmm. you could, um, I don't know if y'all, if people ever did this out there listening, but you could actually set the timer on your VCR and set it to record at certain times and shit. 
but at the time I didn't like doing that because I didn't like the commercials in there. Whereas now I wish I had the commercials in there because seeing some of the old commercials be funny as hell now. Mm-hmm. I used to put in that work and sit in front of the VCR and hit record and stop it and hit record and stop. It's like, hey. but all that being said, we got Black History for that ass from the Urban Intellectuals Black History flashcards. Yes, sir. This is the all women, right? Yes, sir. And today is Carol Mosley Braun. She was born August 16th, 1947, and she's still kicking it, y'all. Hey, we got another one. She's an attorney, activist, and politician. She earned a law degree in 1972 and took a position as a U.S. attorney in Chicago in 1973. While serving as Democratic representative to Illinois' House of Representatives, she advocated for social change, education reform, and health care reform. She's the first African-American woman to be elected to the U.S. Senate in 1992. She fought for civil and women's rights and called for more restrictive gun laws during her time as senator. She served as a U.S. ambassador to New Zealand and Samoa Mm. under President Bill Clinton in 1999. And she campaigned for the Democratic presidential nomination in 2003, but dropped out early in the race to join the private sector. There you go. Who was that? Carol Mosley Braun. There you go. So she would have been the first black president if she would have stayed. Black woman woman president, too. Yeah. She was black, first woman. Mm. That would have been dope. Yeah. You got the same as PJ. You got anything else to approve? Uh, yeah. Oh. Show on Netflix called The Dark. Uh, in the Dark. In the Dark. Yes. Okay. It's a. It's like a suspense. It's just about a blind lady. Yeah, I can't ruin it. It's it's a one season long. I'm on episode five. It's a blind lady who goes through some tribulations, but she's like a crime detective that loves sex. Okay, I see the synopsis says, a young blind woman tries to solve her friend's murder. Boom. Season two premieres April 17th. Oh, so like this week. And then Tiger King. Are y'all hip to the Tiger King? She, mm-hmm. We watched all of it. Ah, I'm still slacking um, from what I've heard. Have you heard seen it or you just heard about it? No, I've only heard. I haven't, I haven't watched it yet. You oh, need to watch it. There's so many fucking memes you'll understand once you watch it. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> people have been memeing that shit out. They actually came out, they added another episode to it, but people said it's trash, though, because I guess it's just like them having like a little talk. You know how shows have those reunion shows and shit? Yeah. They, I guess they had one for that show, and people were like, yeah. Cause I, I guess... want to watch it. <laughs> oh, there you go. But no, nah, yeah, yeah, Tiger King, we watched that shit, because I had to look at it because Stephen Izzy kept talking about it. I'm like, man, what the fuck are they talking about, man? They, they actually did a whole episode on it. They got a couple other... Po- they even had Mike Bafford on there, too. They were all talking about Tiger King. He says that it's worth it, so... It's it's dumb as fuck, man. It's not it's not boring. Like, it's interesting. Like, I, I, I told the spirit... Like, mm. there's, a, there's a clip. I think it's from this movie. Is it from Zack and Mary Make a Porno? I think it's the movie it's from. There's a clip of uh, the one black dude. I can't... Uh, Craig Robinson is his name. And it's mm-hmm. just a shot where he's just looking straight, like, seriously to the camera. He's like, man, white people are fucked up. And then just cuts to Seth Rogen, just shaking his head, smoking weed, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the first thing that came to my mind watching the show. I was like, man, white people are fucked up. Have you sky before? Like, do you remember him from your childhood? Who? The Tiger King? I ain't know nothing about this motherfucker, bro. Me neither. Yes. Y'all remember when they let them animals loose in Zanesville? Oh, they talk about that, I think, on there. Yes, they all connected. It was a it was an animal smuggling ring. Oh, y'all remember that? Uh, I guess I was a little bit older, so I was like a little bit more, more into the I wasn't uh, paying attention to it back then. I didn't I didn't know about that dude. I heard that story though. I tigers and bears running across the Hey. It's like I remember something like that. I just uh. like what's so, so hilarious about that is had this been like Colorado where that happened, like no one would have batted an eye. <laughs> like it would have been like, oh, like that's not the regular lions we have because they have mountain lions running around like crazy up there. There's all types of bears and animals, so they would have been like, huh, that's a different type of lion than yeah, we see usually a tiger see. Tiger running at you at Zanesville. It's like what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Oh, into the dark is a or in the dark is a CW show. I don't know. That's just good though. Yeah, it's a CW show. I thought it was a Netflix show at first. What about you, Spirit? We got anything to hustle approve? Yes. Okay, so I would like to hustle approve my school. Again? Because, yeah, <laughs> again. Because, so I work two part-time jobs while I'm in school. So I didn't know this was happening. Apparently, I wasn't paying attention to the emails because they email us a lot um, about COVID-19 updates and stuff. Um, so sometimes I don't look at all those emails, but they uh, gave us a check, um, even though we've been out of work. And uh, my other job had not. 
at all. Your school gave you a check? Yeah. Oh. Like I guess I need to get back in school, huh? Yeah, like kind of like a, a stimulus. <laughs> well, it was for my job. She works at the school. I also work at the school. Oh, she also works at the school. Yeah, so it was because I'm a student employee. So, yeah, ah. like they're looking out for me when a city don't even look out for its employees. So. Okay. So All right, like, hey, right, I wasn't expecting that little, you know, COVID stimulus little check since we can't work. That's how. Who song was that PJ was like, you can't fuck with me because I got a check or whatever fuck it was. <laughs> Who song is that? Because I got a check. Somebody, it was like, that was somebody's song. It's like, I got a check. So it sounded like I don't, it sounded almost like Jeezy. I think that's what. Hold on. That's what I'm thinking for. That's, that's the voice in my head as I'm saying it. Oh, is it Yo Gotti? Yeah, that's it right there, PJ. Oh yeah. <laughs> you ever heard that? Yeah. <laughs> Like all the new hip hop references today, man. I was about to say, it amazes me these songs that you do know. I would not expect you to know those guys. See, everybody gonna know that soon because when everybody start getting them checks, that shit probably about to be popping in the streets again. Then he's gonna get his streams back up. Hell yeah. Uh Oh, I'm also to approve some video games real quick, P. Okay. I've been since I, we've been at home not doing shit. I've just been buying all the new shit. Now I fucking uh, I beat the Resident Evil Three remake. That shit was cool. A lot of people been complaining about it because it's like short. But I don't give a fuck. Cause like I was saying before, I don't mind short games because I got a fucking life now and I have to go to work and shit. So I can fuck it. I don't care. It don't bother me. We it ain't like when we was kids no more. We just sit at home playing the game all day. Now it's like I gotta make time for it. So short games are actually cool to me now. Like get done with it and go to the next one. But um. The fucking Final Fantasy VII remake came out, and that shit's hard, bro. I love that shit. They still so out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a remake of number seven, but they had like fifteen came out like a couple years ago. Oh wow. Yeah, they still make them, but they remade the seventh one, and that shit fun as fuck. If you like them type of games, I used to not like them type of games, but I recently started fucking with them a little bit. So I recommend you check that shit out if you like those type of. Games. Even if you don't, fuck it, you might like it. I don't know. I didn't think I was gonna like it, and I played the original one and love that shit. So there you go. Hustle Proof, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, and Resident Evil 3 Remake. Because fuck you, we were making all the old shit. <laughs> cool. All right. Now, oh, PJ. Yes. How your music doing? Oh. The music on my SoundCloud 614P underscore music. Hey, that's the one. Yeah. Well, the new demo, the demo is actually doing pretty good. Mm-hmm. Getting good feedback. People like these bars that I'm dropping. So Hell yeah. go listen if you haven't listened already. And if you did listen, listen to it again, goddammit. Yes. Rule number one, play the Pauly P first. <laughs> oh, sis dropped her album. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, yeah, that's it is right. called that. Tuned In by Midwest Jess. You can check that out on all streaming platforms as well. Dun, 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 dun. Say it one more time for them, just in case they didn't hear you loud enough. It is tuned in Midwest Jess. There you all go. platforms. M I D W E S J E S. All one. No spaces. J E S S. No spaces. She don't practice social distancing with that name, player. Ain't no space. <laughs> Ain't no space. <laughs> there you go. Well, yeah, check all that shit out. Yes, new tunes for you. And if you want some podcasting, I'll tell you something real quick. Real, Y'all ready for this shit? Let them know. Let them know. We on social media like a motherfucker, but the home base is pretty much on Twitter. And you can find us on Twitter at capital H, capital V, capital H, capital P, lowercase podcast, HVH podcast on Twitter. And PJ is where? At Pauly, capital P A U L Y. No, it's not Pauly PJ. It is, but you said you got to die. Oh, oh, capital P, lowercase A U L Y, capital P, lowercase J, Pauly PJ. There you go. And the spirit is where? The spirit 95. That is the number 95. And on, if you go to the HVH podcast page, the main page in that bio, there's a link tree link. And you can get to everything from there. And one of the things you can get to, I think the first thing you can get to on that list is the Patreon. You can be like Miss Neek and make us watch movies like Die Hard Avengers if you donate as little as a dollar. But if you donate $3, you get a little bit more and you get unlimited movie downloads as long as you're a patron. So you go check that shit out at 
home, uh, patreon.com slash home video hustle. Almost had it backwards. Support the show and we'll support your eardrums and your mental well-being with good ass podcasts. Keep you happy. Keep you sane. Keep you, give you something to do while everybody just sitting their ass in the house. Right. What, what better is there to do than to listen to two black guys talk about action movies? I mean, t- come on. Two black guys. You got the mixed girl. You got some hip hop shit in there. Right. Everything. It's all there. Man. It's all there. Oh, and shout out to, I think, Michael Bagford mm-hmm. I was on Twitter, and it was TNT. That was the song that I was mm-hmm. I saw that, yeah. talking about. I was like, yeah, that, that's definitely the Tony Hawk. I went to YouTube and listened to it. That's the Tony Hawk song. Yeah, I think that was ACDC, I think it was. ACDC, yes. Well, that's the thing, y'all. You come to us for the hip-hop questions, you go to Mike Bagford for the fucking rock and roll questions. There you go. Because we that is not our area, right, of expertise. <laughs> I get I get I a little basic info. I got you. But if you want shit like that, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> but if you want to know what fucking year like Criminal Minded came out and what label it was on, like I got you all day. All that knowledge. PJ, you know what could happen one day? What could happen? There could be a podcast out there talking about hip hop and they could be like, yo, you remember when Pauly P first album dropped? Like, what's your what's your favorite Pauly P song? Top five Pauly P right now. Mm, top five Pauly P. God damn. PJ. Yes. What is your top five Pauly P right now? Uh, <laughs> the top, that new demo. No, I'm talking the about track wise. Uh, shit. What are Pauly P's to... favorite Pauly P songs? What are Pauly P's favorite? Uh, Mo Better. That's number one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, plug it in. Ah, okay. Uh, I got this joint song with sis called Maxine that's mm-hmm. about to go crazy. Uh, that fuck my job song that I sent you, <laughs> yeah. we're gonna put out and uh, plugging in. You said that already. For the real, yeah. Fuck, I forgot about the real. I said you said plugging in at number two and number five. You must really fuck with that one. Oh yeah, I fuck with that. All right, so then the real. Yep. Boom. <laughs> there you go. Top Paul five. E. Top five. Paul E. P. Song. There you go. There you go. Well, here's a tougher one for you. you ready? Yeah. Paulie P's favorite top five home video hustle episodes. Uh, Oversex Rug Suckers from Mars. That's number one. Just cause I remember that time, and that was that was a hard time, but that was fun. That's what we do it for. That's like that is the hustle. You know, we've been talking about going back and doing that movie again. We have a reason to do it again now. Why? Because we can make her watch it now. <laughs> ah, okay. I've never seen that. Okay. Yeah, I never showed her that. So yeah. Grade A trash. I just wish I gave it a slightly higher score than I did at the time. Um, it's number two. Did, truck, did we did Truck Turner, right? That was I think that was was that the episode before? That might be the episode before that I think, or it's in, wow. it's, it's in the first ten with it I think. Um, it's episode five, if I remember right. Damn, I, I can look this up while you think. My bad. You can go ahead and talk. I'll look up and see what numbers there. I think. Oh, never mind. I already went to it. <laughs> uh, Django. Yeah, Truck that Turner was is five, shit. and Oversex Rug Suckers is eight. Damn, I'm reaching Art. back. Shit, Django. Django's number three. That was a fun one. Yeah. Uh, episode 100, I think. That was 100? That was Fuck. 100. Yeah, uh, that was 100 because Boss Nigga was the two-year anniversary. Yeah. Star Wars was fun, even though I don't like it, but that's like the original. first one. Oh. My original, my first introduction. That's like episode nine. That's the one after uh, episode, uh, Rux, uh, I think. There's a lot of classic shit that came from that shit. Yep, number nine. That's what started our foundation with the podcast. Mm-hmm. Sis says she can't wait for us to watch Lord of the Rings. I can wait all motherfucking day. <laughs> uh, number five. I don't know. It has to be a black movie. I just don't know. I was surprised you. Well, you did say Truck Turner. That's right. Truck Turner and Django. Those are definitely. But I'd probably want another of these black movies that just had us hype. Pulp Fiction. Oh, Pulp Fiction already did. took number five, huh? It's friendship fundamental right there. I do got a shout out to Dolomite episode though. That's the first episode when we got the spirit to talk on the microphone too. Ha! Ah, when she became the apparition known as the spirit. And y'all had y'all first mm-hmm. fight on her first episode. You don't say. You and her had that debate about Felix wanting to play with the Shopkins toys. I don't even know what Shopkins are. They're little the vegetables and grocery items that are like stuffed animals and stuff. No. Oh, that's for after my time. I know Simons and Furbies and shit like that. What the hell is a Simon? Oh my god, PJ, did you hear she just said what? She said, Do I she said what is a Simon? For real? She just said that, PJ. What's like the game where you, you 
match the pattern of what was yeah, going? Oh, the Simon Says. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought you said, like, when you said Simon, I was thinking, like, well, that's what it's called. You said, I thought it was a Simon Says. No, it's just, it, the thing's just Simon. People say Simon Says. Oh, but yeah, it's so like the little colors. Yeah, it's like the little yellow. I know red, what yellow. those are. About, that's why I was like, what? But when you said it right after Furby's, and I'm thinking it's like a stuffed animal type thing. I'm like, oh, what no, the hell no, is no. this? A Simon. I know that that when you say that, that reminds me of fucking uh, Nano Pet. Or a uh, Bop It. Oh, Nano Pets. I forgot about that shit. Remember the Bop It? Yeah. I had a Bop Godzilla it. Tamaguchi. I never had a Bop It, though. I never did. Cameron I had a Bop play It. With it. <laughs> Twist it. Turn it. Did you have Hit Clips? Bop It. I remember Hit Clips. Hey, we were just talking. Me and her were just talking about Hit Clips not too long ago. Yeah. yeah. They, That's you a can, you, thing. You can buy them on eBay. <laughs> you don't I mean, say. Yeah. People selling them shits on there, man. We just looked that shit up. It was a couple weird joints in there, like some of the songs, like they had a couple like old like Motown songs mixed in there with the, the boy bands and shit. It was weird. Like, what the fuck is this selection? Mike Baxford, Mike Baxford, please. Who is this? Someday, doom 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 doom, man, our life will pass us by. Doom 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 doom, yes. Mike, Mike will know. He will know. He is our go-to. Yeah, I don't know that. Like, we got down. Sounds like some Beatles shit. <laughs> Yo, I thought that too, but I was like, I don't know. No, it's not the Beatles. It's like, uh-uh. it's like... You remember any of the lyrics to it at all besides what you just said? No. I just, that's <laughs> all. <laughs> what, 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 was you, what word did you just say? I'm going to just type it in and see what the I fuck it is. And wonder why, why you were always, you were always there, there for me. For me. I lay around and wonder why you were always there for me. I found it, PJ. Oh, shit. Who I'm is it? I'm pretty sure I did. It's a group named Sugar Ray. Ah, Josh. I'm about to play it for you. That is Why definitely it. Hit I don't know. Sugar Ray. <laughs> that, one, that was one of her hit clip. That was one of the things. <laughs> I'm, about, I'm about to look up that hit clip and see if I can find a picture. Oh, oh shit. Sugar Ray. Okay. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I found a picture of a hit clip on eBay, but I don't think it's that song. No. Text it to me. <laughs> no, I'm about to now. I'm just waiting for it to load so I can screenshot it. Oh, no, that is the song y'all just talking about right there. Yeah. No, no, it's no, it's a song called When It's Over. You like remember this vividly. This is one of her yeah, like toys that she <laughs> Alright, I just sent it to you, PJ. Or right, send it now. You said you just hit the studio, PJ? Yeah. Just got here though. Yes. Yes. That is it. That is the hit clips. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh shit. What's this PJ about to get his music thing on? We're gonna wrap this up right here. Oh, sorry guys. Uh I don't mean to cut us short. It's been over two hours, pillow. Fuck it. Oh, has it? Movie technically over. We just talking now. Ah, yeah, right. <laughs> it's just rambling. <sighs> but yeah, 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 yeah. So if you were a fan of the show and all that, follow them social media links. I forgot I did all that already. So we kind of good anyway. We could just leave. Oh, yeah. Bye, niggas. Yeah, you come back H- next, motherfuckers. <laughs> HVH podcast <laughs> on Twitter. Paulie PJ on Twitter. The Spirit ninety five on Twitter. Home uh, Patreon dot com slash Home Video Hustle. Six one four P underscore Music on SoundCloud. All that good shit. Yeah, all that good shit. So I got one thing left to tell them, then P. And what is that? So I'm Brent. And I'm PJ. And I'm the Spirit. Have a good rest of your motherfucking Friday. Have a good rest of whatever day you listen to this shit on. Go watch Die Hard with a Vengeance if you ain't seen it before. And if you haven't seen it, shame on you niggas. You need to go for shame. Shame, <laughs> shame, shame, shame. That's right. Oh, PJ, we got to watch Low Down Dirty Shame one day, too. Yes. That's another one to add to the list. We got a big list. We're going to get to it one day. But we're going to get yes. the Patreons out, too. Next week, I think I know what we're mm-hmm. going to do next week, and it's a movie that has be- it's been like begged to us to do for a long time now, so we might finally just do it from next week. I feel like that's when we're in that like mode right now, where all the ones that people have been begging us for, we're just, here you go, take He just recently hit me up again, he's like, yo, y'all still going to do that movie? He's like, yes, we got- I got you. Next week, I we're got- going to do it. Okay. All right. All right. So next week, I don't know what this is. Is uh, it good or is it bad? It looks up our alley. I've never seen it before either, but it came into theaters and I didn't get to go see it, but I wanted to. It looks like some, I think I, I told you before it's the movie that I told you looks kind of like hardcore Henry, but not in first person. Ah, 
right. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm excited now. Yeah, yes. I'm curious to watch. It's going to be some more action. Yes. Then, like I said, then we might get back to Patreon. But we, like I said, we're trying to satisfy the fans this year. We're going to get everybody's requests in. Oh, yes. Go back to my DJing days and request line that shit. <laughs> on the request side there you go hey there you go hey <laughs> well, guess we just got to say peace peace